Uh, kia ora koto, my name's Shane Rangi, and you're listening to an unexpected podcast. Hello, friends, and welcome to an unexpected podcast. I'm Ez, and we're coming to you from the Shire of America, the beautiful state of Ohio, and a little village called Amanda. Uh, we have a special episode for you today. We are interviewing uh, Shane Rungi uh, from New Zealand, and uh, it's it's uh, quite a treat. So uh, we hope you enjoy this. There were some technical difficulties, but for the most part, this ran extremely smooth, and uh, we can't thank him enough. It was such an awesome experience. So um, you'll kind of hear uh, as up and moving around and trying to make sure that everything is is, is running smooth and Lane is conducting uh, this, this awesome interview. Shane's got some great advice, some great insight into the films and just, you know, um, I, just all around good guy. And uh, if, you, if you stick around clear till the end, you'll get some really good advice on life and things. So we were thrilled with the experience and uh, just really happy to have him on the podcast. So, so sit back and enjoy our interview with Shane Rungy. So I know Shane from my Kiwi mom. Uh, I went to New Zealand um, originally in 2011. I did half my student teaching there. I don't. I don't know if you know this. You probably wouldn't know this. No. I went there. No, and I, I did half. All news to me. Yeah, I went there in tw- uh, 2011 to do half my. What's student- funny is you started saying that, and you saw the change in my face. <laughs> yeah. just, Jane, Jane, I was like, wait, Shane doesn't know my whole life. But yeah, um, and so. Uh, I, I went there because I, I was in love with Lord of the Rings. Uh, you know, when it came out when I was 12, uh, I fell in love with it, changed my life. Um, the story was amazing. It got me into the books, and I, I, I love the films. They're magic. Um, so, you know, you get into college, and you can do half your student teaching abroad. And I was like, man, if I could go to New Zealand, that would be awesome. So I, I looked into it. I did it. I got support from my parents um, and, 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 and did it. And we were in contact with the, uh, the school uh, headmaster principal. And I said, um, I don't know if, uh, any of your staff are Maori, but I would love to, um, be with a Maori teacher and, and learn the culture. I said, I think it's fascinating. I think it's a, it's, it's a, a beautiful culture and I would love to be around that if I could. And they said, we have, yeah. um, one of our teachers, Margaret Seller, who is Maori yeah. and, um, you could, you could be in her class. I was like, that'd be awesome. And then he got back later. He's like, actually, um, they would be able to host you as well if you'd like. Uh, and you could live with them and teach with her. I was like, holy crap, are you kidding me? So, yeah. So, so I went and um, uh, spent time with them. And, you know, as, as we got to talking, uh, they're like, so why'd you, why'd you want to come to New Zealand? I was like, well, <laughs> it's because I love Lord of the Rings. They're like, of course. Yeah, another American <laughs> here because they love Lord of the Rings. I was like, yeah, it's, you know, but I'm, I want to learn about the country. I said, I've, I know it's a beautiful place. And, and, um, you know, the, the Maori culture and, and, uh, and, the uh, um, you know, European influence and everything. I just want to learn about it. And, um, and so anyway, we're talking about Lord of the Rings and, and, uh, they were like, oh, well, you know, our, our nephew was, was in the, in the films. And I was like, oh, really? I was like, you're kidding me. They were like, yeah, uh, Shane. And I was like, Shane Rungy. <laughs> they were like, you know, Shane. I was like, I've seen all the appendices. I know who Shane is. He did the Haka for Vigo Mortensen and Bernard Hill. He's the Witch King. He's on the Mumic. I know who Shane is. And I had this little fanboy geek out in there. I think we were in the kitchen, in the, in the booth, just sitting there. And they were like, okay, all right, calm down. I was like, that is amazing. <laughs> I, think, I think it was on that trip where we became Facebook friends because I was like, I was asking Jono and Nate. I'm like, guys, would it be weird if I friend requested? Like, would that be weird if I friend requested them? <laughs> they were like, no, man, just do it. Everyone in New Zealand knows each other. So... I did it, and it's just uh, so that's how I that's how I know of you. And um, guys, Shane is an amazing human being. Um, yep. All I had to do was ask if he'd want to get on here and, and talk with us and share stories with you guys. And he said, "Yeah." He said, "Whenever, just let me know. I'm free here and here." And um, uh, just a, just such a kind kind human being. He always wishes me happy birthday. Um, yeah, what you a know, good guy. I mean, I mean it's come just, on. I don't he more than more than some of my family telling me happy birthday it's great um <laughs> but anyway um so that's how how we were able to uh, uh get hooked up with shane here um so we we want to hear your stories man we just want to let you go we'll we'll ask questions every once in a while did you look the guns are coming out bro. i know don't worry i was gonna ask him about his, his you know, workout routine soon and i think ezra made a comparison that is just perfect he was uh, like lane we're sitting in the restaurant okay this little restaurant with with five people in it and he said I think Shane's kind of the rock 
of New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. I was like, bro, I think I, I think you just hit the nail on the head, man. I think we're absolutely. gonna get to your workout routine yeah. later, okay? Because I mean, <laughs> so for uh, man, uh, not at all, not at all. Well, it's us. You are. You're amazing. So <laughs> little boy from the east coast, guys. So can you tell us about <laughs> New Zealand, though? Right? Say it again. You know the rocks from New Zealand. I did not know that. I, yeah, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, he left. Uh, he left uh, New Zealand, I think, when he was about eleven or twelve, and then grew up in Hawaii. It's, yeah, yeah. His wow. dad was uh, his dad was big time wrestler right. over here. That's right. Huh. Wow, that's, that's awesome, nice. man. Yeah. So, can you take us back to that that little little Maori boy who grew up on the east on the east coast? Can you tell us about your origins, uh, your life as a kid, and then like how how did you how did you get interested in, in becoming a stunt man and getting in the pictures and, and being a movie star? Yeah, well, you know what's funny, man, is that, like, I am. I'm, I am just a little married boy from the East Coast, and and you know, you you said how easy it was to, to get me to come and 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 talk, and it's, it's just because, you know, to to me, I'm I'm no different to anyone. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm yeah. I'm just living my life over here, and I'm 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 just doing some. I'm lucky enough to be doing something that I love to do. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I was fine. I was I was brought up by my grandparents, yeah. um, which is traditional. Like um, you know, the grandparents get the first the first born. Um, wow. And yeah, and and there's a couple of reasons why you know the first the first child gets given to the grandparents. Um, it's you either you either get you know it, it's it's because um, you know traditionally it's it's. Maori parents are quite young okay. when they have their first child. Yeah. Um. So the grandparents take take it over so that they can still they can still have you know live their life. But yeah. if they if the, if they have a second child, well then that's their problem. You know. It's, wow. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. Um. You didn't learn the lesson the first time, so you know yeah. suffer the consequences. <laughs> Oh, it's the second time. Hit and learn the lesson. The, 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 the uh, other reason, the other reason though, is because you know grandparents have got a lot more time yeah. for the child, so they've got a lot more love for the child. And you know, not that the parents don't love, but you, you, you know, the grandparents already been through it. Yeah. And now this is their grandchild. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And the other reason, the other reason why is that they can pass down the knowledge that they know to you. Wow. Now the only wow. downside to it is that my grandparents were brought up in a time when speaking Māori was beaten out of them. Oh, like my grandfather, so like like even their story alone, my, my, my grandfather couldn't speak English. My grandmother couldn't really, you know, she could speak Māori, but she yeah. was um, sort of like on the Spanish side of things. So, hmm. so her, her, her Māori was, was, was pretty good, but yeah. not as good as my grandfather's. And so she taught my grandfather to speak English and he taught her, how to speak Māori properly. But then when it came to me taking me over, like it was beaten out of them at school, you know, they weren't allowed to speak. And, and then when it came to me, they, they spoke to me and I was pretty much fluent up until I started school. And then once I started school, they stopped speaking Māori to me because uh, to, to them, English was the language. You know, you're not right. going to get fair speaking Māori. Um, everything's about English. Right. Um, and and so I I I grew up and, and it's funny too because but believe it or not man I I was I was a shy little boy and hmm. they took me to a speech therapist and because I started school at five years old and hmm. you know English because I was speaking Maori a lot and and I wasn't really much of a talker yeah and I got to school and um, the school was a bit worried because I I wasn't really speaking English and, and you know I wasn't really talking. And they took me to a speech therapist, and they found out that uh, I had a really bad stutter, and I oh, had quite wow. a thick tongue. Wow. So I, I, I wasn't speaking. I wasn't. I wasn't really talking. Not because that I couldn't talk. It's because I didn't want to talk. Wow. Because I was, I was quite, quite shy, and I didn't want to get, you know, ridiculed sure, and, yeah. and stuff. So I just didn't. I just didn't talk, and I was quite shy. Um, and then I, basically, you know started coming out of my shell and talking to people and and getting a, but I still had a really bad stutter yeah and I, I still had trouble pronouncing my words and 
or pronouncing my word, sorry. Um, and then what, what happened was that sort of like, um, but I was always into, you know, the Maori culture. We were, we're all about singing and mm, yeah, entertaining yeah. and, you know, you know, it, it, if you ever went to, uh, my auntie's place and, yep. you know, that they always have a guitar out yep. and, you know, <laughs> always singing, you know, yep. when we're drinking and stuff. She taught me how to play the uke. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly, you know. Yeah. And what about the spoons? Did she teach you how to play the spoons? No, I didn't get. I didn't get the. No, <laughs> I didn't get the spoons lesson. The, my mum, my mum could play the spoons. <laughs> That's awesome, man. But um, yeah, it's it's it's, it's very musical, you yeah. know. And and so I was um I was in the Kapahaka group and yeah. and stuff like that. And I just had the I just had the best childhood ever That's being great. brought up by my grandparents. And then basically um, got to college. Went into college and um, I was at boarding school, um, and and it was it was there and, and even there I was like really really shy. Like yeah. huh. I always, you know, people I, I just wasn't really a talker. And yeah. and around guys and that I was okayish, yeah. but around around girls I was I was shocking. I just wouldn't say anything. Yeah. And 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 basically what it was was um, I got onto it later on. And what it was, the reason why I was so shy around girls and that is because I, um, I, what had happened is that I realized that my stutter would come back when I got nervous. Sure. Yep. And it got really bad. And around girls, I was extremely nervous. Yeah. So yeah. then my stutter would come out. So then I wouldn't talk. Oh, man. So, you know, and, oh. it's, and, and, you know, I was quite a, I was a, I was okay at sport. Uh, uh, you know, 100, 200, um, surf life saving, you know, um, you know, athletics, rugby, basketball. Yeah, I, yeah. I just love sport. Yeah, man. I love sport, rowing, cycling, BMX, you wow. know, you name it. Wow. And then, um, yeah. And then, and then basically was that I got into what I'm doing from believe it or not from doing sport. Because yeah, I was at sure. rugby training, sure. I was at rugby training, and um, one of our drama teachers at the school wanted to start a uh, a dance troupe. Okay. And but he didn't want you stereotypical dancers because we we're in all boys school and we we're you know it was a pretty tough school back then. Yeah, yeah. So he didn't want you stereotypical dancers. He actually wanted people to come along and watch the shows, you know, and he yeah. didn't want the dance troupe to be teased and bullied. Sure. Yeah. So he um he just came along to the to the rugby training and um and basically he he said you know does any I'm starting up a dance troupe if anyone's interested you know I'd love for you guys to come along and audition and um all I can guarantee is that I can help you play sport better yeah wow and then that's they amazing each other and we went yeah we should we should go along this could be pretty cool yeah went along. Got in, and um, my mate got into the first first tier, and and I was sort of like the the second tier yeah. of dancers. And then, unbeknownst to me, in the fine print, if you were in the dance troupe, you um you had to do the school plays. Oh no way, man! <laughs> and so the um and that's how literally that's how I got into theatre um at high school. You know, we did our first our first uh, play was Jesus Christ Superstar. What? And then, oh, sorry, it was Greece. And then we did oh uh, Jesus gosh. Christ Superstar. So and like, then in like Greece, musicals even, like you were singing yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, musical. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, I did, yeah, I I try to sing. I'm I'm, I'm one of those singers, though. The, the drunker you get, the better I sound. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, Jesus Christ Superstar. And then basically what happened was that um, did the show – I went back home up to the farm during the school holidays, came back, and my uncle said to me, oh, someone from the Waitui Choir has been phoning us up trying to get a hold of you because they need a baritone bass to sing. Oh, wow. And I went, choir? Oh, yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah, nah. No, it's not really my cup of tea. And he goes, oh, yeah, I think, I think, I think they've got a competition down in Wellington. And I went, Wellington? I'd never been to Wellington. I'd heard of Wellington, a big city, big smoke. <laughs> I went, yeah. Wellington? He goes, yeah. And he goes, is it free? And he was just like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you don't have to pay for it. I said, like, oh, shit, what's the phone number? And, 
they, he was just like, oh, we've lost, you know, we wrote it down, but we lost it. So oh, I went oh, through yeah. back then, back in the day, people, we used yeah. to have a thing, the yellow pages and the, and the <laughs> telephone book. So I'd go through the telephone book, um, found found all these places that I thought, you know, would 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 you know know what I was talking about, yeah. and no one did. And I got a hold of um, the Gisborne Operatic Society, and I got a hold of this lady called Maureen Potros, who I then you know phone. I hope this isn't too boring for you. Listeners. No, this is awesome. Oh, We're this loving great, this, man. man. This is great. Are you I, still? Oh, okay. oh yeah. yeah, this is awesome. Okay, and and so 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 yeah. What what happened? Literally, what happened was that um, phoned her up. She answered the phone. I explained the situation. She said, "Look, I have no idea what you're talking about." And I said, oh. <laughs> "But next weekend we've got a play reading. We're doing a play, and we've got a reading down at the uh, Gisborne Museum, War Memorial Museum. And it'd be great if you could come down and, and read." And I, yeah, on the phone, cuz I'm I'm big and brave. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, "Yeah, sure, I'd love to come down." <laughs> sure. Yeah. And of course, gave me the times, and I was like, "Excellent. Yep, I'll be yeah, there." Be there. I hung <laughs> up and I was, Oh my God! What have I done? <laughs> and oh, and funny. then basically, basically, I was just like, I'm a man of my word, and I thought, yeah. oh man, I've told her I'll come down, yeah. so I'll go down. So went down there, and I got down there, and I realised I'm not a reader because mm. yeah, you know, I can I can read. It's not that I can't read, but yeah. I don't like reading out loud sure. because again, my speech sure. impediment. Yeah. I can't pronounce words properly. My stutter. Yeah. So reading just wasn't mm. my, my thing. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. So I had my cap on. I had my cap pulled down so no one could see my eyes. I literally just saw my nose down. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And I got I, I got the script, and, and they told me the character I was playing. And I went through, and I pretty much turned the corner over every page that I had lines on. And then I'd just go through and quickly just read it so that by the time it got to, to you know, as they were running the lines, everyone else was just going page by page, you know, listening to what was there. Not me, bro. I was just like reading all, all, all of my yeah, stuff and then, yeah. and then looking back to see. You know, all I was doing was turning the pages when they were turning their pages so that I, I knew where they were in the oh, script. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Then, and then basically yeah, it got to me and I, 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 I winged my way through it, touched oh, wow. it, and then at the end of it, they said, "So, so auditions are next week." And I went, "Oh, okay, yeah, sure. What what day?" And they were just like on Saturday. I went, "Oh, look, I'm really sorry, but Saturday I've got a game of rugby." <laughs> and they said, "Oh, what time's your game?" And I said, two o'clock." And she said, "Oh, what time will you finish?" I said, "Oh, about three thirty. She goes, "Well, that's good because the audition will finish at about five o'clock." Oh boy! And I was just like, <laughs> "I'll tell you what, if I can, if I can make it." I'll, you know, if I finish in time and I can make it, I'll come down and, and I'll audition. You know, I never said to her I'd audition, so I never sure. turned up. Sure. I, was, I was never going to turn up. Right. And honestly, you know, without a word of a lie, at 6.30 that night, I'm sitting at home after a big game, just, you know, just, you know, it was a beautiful day. Mm. And all of a sudden at 6 o'clock, I hear at oh, the boy. door. Oh, boy. So I was just like, oh, hell, who's that? So I go and open it, and there's Maureen Potros and Jill Clout. And they look at me and they say, look, we know you didn't come down to the audition. I said, yeah, look, I'm oh really gosh. sorry. But the game of it. Go, so we gave you the part anyway. Oh, my oh gosh. Boy. And I was just like, <laughs> oh. oh, my gosh, are you serious? And, like, we had – Six weeks of rehearsals, but and it was an operatic that Maureen. Oh, it was it was um, an operatic? Uh, no, a pantomime that Maureen Potros had written called "Once Upon a Twice," and I was to play the court jester. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and nice. Um, this is awesome. Oh no, actually, it wasn't. It was it was another one, and it was um, I was to be a. I was to play an Indian Brave. That's right. That was the very first one I did, oh, wow. the Indian Brave, which is called, um, what was his name? Lower Watha, I think. Huh. Instead of Higher Watha, it was yeah. Lower Watha. Sure, yeah. Lower Watha. And sort of like, so I did it, and honestly, no one knew what I looked like. Like yeah. for the rehearsals of six weeks, I always had my cap on. <laughs> they, came up, they came up to me the, the day before dress rehearsal. Dress rehearsal was the next day, and the mm. show started the, the day after that. And they came up to me, and they said, you realize that you're not allowed to wear your cap on stage, eh? And I was just like, oh, yeah. 
No, you yeah, I realize that. <laughs> and I was like, well, it's just that you've never taken it off. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah, but it's okay. And basically what it was for me was that I kept my cap on right up until I had to walk onto stage. Mm, yeah. And then I took it off when I went onto stage. And it was one of those ones where when I was on stage, I wasn't, I was no longer me. Wow. You know? Yeah, sure. So, yeah. but as soon as it's I like came, being on the phone, kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you know, on the phone, yeah, I'm big and tough yep. and brave, you know, hang yep. it up. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what yeah. did I just do? And same thing on stage. You know, yeah. I, I, I come out and I was no longer me. You know, I was this character. And it was, um, yeah, it was just one of those ones that I, I, I was doing it and just, and we then split from operatic society to center stage, did a couple of more years of that. And then, um, I was, you know, I got into poverty by rugby. So I, I represented my, my province and played in the New Zealand national competition. Wow. Um, and we, we, you know, we, we played a game one sad day. We came back to my place Sunday morning. I woke up. I must've been still a little bit tiddly from the day before. <laughs> well, the night before, sorry. And, um, there was a documentary on New Zealand drama school and, 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 and the show was called spot on mm. and they had, they had uh, New Zealand drama school there. And, mm. and honestly, I'm, I must have, the residuals of alcohol must have still been in my system. <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> I, me and the friends and that were sitting there and I just looked at it and I went, far out. I could do that. Yeah. And unbeknownst to me, one of my mates, he goes and finds that application form. Oh my gosh. Fills it out my name, sends it away. Wow, and then I get this letter, and it's saying I had an audition. Um, I had a local audition in Gisborne, wow. and um, this is for New Zealand Drama School, which is now called Toy Fakari. So anyway, I I went around to my local audition, and I had to do a classical piece, a modern piece, and a song. Mm. And so luckily for me, the song I uh, we just done Joseph and his amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Mm. So I did a, a calypso. And there, so I thought, well, I know that, so I'll just do that. Yeah. Um, my modern piece I did um, from uh, uh, oh, it's uh, it's a Maori play that was written here and far out. My memory's gone, wow. but I think it's Puhuta Kawatri. And wow. um, and then the um, the other one I did was I did Mercutio from Romeo and Juliet. Wow, wow that's cool. Um, and then, um, and so went along, did that, and um, I passed that. And, and to, I'll, I'll be honest, I would have been really disappointed if I didn't get past that audition because it was only two of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got past that, and then, and then I had to go and do a regional down in down in Hastings, uh, Napier actually at Tennyson oh. at the Tennyson Hotel. So I went down there, drove down there, I did that, and then I came back, and then I got into the national audition, which was a three day audition down in Wellington. So I drove all the way down from Gisborne, uh, which is about an eight and a half hour drive. Did that, and then and then basically did that audition and. At the end of the three days, I had an interview in front of a panel of ten people. Wow! And honestly, I, I didn't. I, I was just like, "There's no way yeah. I'm going to get in," you know. And I got back home after Gizzy, and um, in about December, mid December, I got this little thin envelope, and I remember it, you know, from drama school. I was just like, "Oh, you know, it's, that's it. I'm yeah. done." Yeah, uh, it, it's over. You know, it's, it, <laughs> One just a one A four letter, you yeah. know, and I opened it up and they said, Congratulations, you were the you know, the standards were so high this year instead of taking ten out of five hundred and forty eight that audition, we're taking twelve. Wow. Huh. So yeah, and I was lucky enough to be one of those twelve and they said that I'd get my applica my, my, my welcome pack in that in the mail and so I packed up my life. Came down to Wellington and wow. pretty much that's how I got into the industry. That's amazing. Okay, so this this whole time you're, you're telling your story, and I think this is – you said something about hopefully you're not putting anybody to sleep, and, and it's I think it's quite the opposite uh, because – um, a lot of everyone's on a journey, right? We're all on this journey in our life. We all have things that we want to accomplish, things that we want to do. 
Yeah. And it's, uh, we're listening to your, your story now. And I'm thinking about when Tammy was telling, telling us yeah, about yeah. how she got into the industry too. And when she was telling us her story, we kept saying, Tammy, it's, there was a lot of destiny. There was a lot of just I, like indefinable, it, it, something else got you there. And, and you're telling your story and I'm seeing the same hand. Like you, you, you loved sports and sports led to dance, right. dance led to theater. And then, and, and like, you know, your mate putting in the application for you when you were just joking around yeah. and it's just, it's an amazing thing. So I think a lot of people are going to look at, hear your story and be very inspired by it and yeah. think, well, you know, like just, just being available, making your, pursuing your dreams and, and, uh, wow like anything can happen that's amazing man that's yeah. amazing yeah well and that's it so so it's it, it i mean the irony of it is is that i actually you know i got into the industry as an actor um, right yeah as, yeah. as you know um and and yeah and and so and then from there i got into stunts and, and it's it's so funny because like um you know i Couple of couple of months of doing stunts, and all of a sudden, everyone forgot that I was an actor. Yeah, right. And, um, <laughs> you know, and 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 think that I'm a stunt man. But I um yeah man, it was a, like our year at drama school. I was I was very very fortunate. Mm. Um, our year at drama school, uh, the the year before the the you know out the second year that we were there, they were the most successful uh, year at New Zealand drama school, mm. um, and they like the the most uh well known person to come out of that year is uh, a New Zealand actor called Cliff Curtis. Okay. Who's he's he's been in he's been in numerous, numerous yeah. You know, wow. yeah. Um wow. you know, he he plays a lot of Hispanic guys, you know, training day with Daniel Day. Yeah. Um, oh wow. wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, he's you know, he's collateral damage, um you name it, and he's he's pretty much been in it. He's, That's amazing. He's our most you know well known, most famous New Zealand um, actor. Wow. And so so you know, he was he was a year before me. So yeah. so good kinda, good company you're in, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I was an extremely good company, and then and then you know, and even at drama school, you know, it was just like we you know, I we had a. I came into drama school and, you know, I was a sportsman. I was playing rugby and I was sure. still playing rugby when I got down here and I was, and I, and I was boxing as well. And like most, most actors back in my time, you know, didn't do any of that. So eight by I 10, was, man. You got to take care of the I eight by 10. A black sheep. I was yeah. a black sheep sure. at New Zealand drama school, you know? Yeah. Um, and my whole motto was that when I was at drama school, I'd give 300%. But when I finished drama school, like I could, I could then just go out and do whatever I wanted, you know, yeah. I'd carry on with my sport. Sure. And I was kind of shunned for doing it. I, I remember my very second, my second week at New Zealand drama school, we were doing, a, um, we were going down to see a show that was at uh, uh, Downstage Cinema called uh, Theatre called um, uh, Shirley Valentine, and I was, I was. So excited because this was going to be the first first show I'd, I'd ever been to, first play I'd ever been to. Yeah, and I, I specifically remember one of one of the girls in my class looked at me, and with disgust when I said this, and she was just like, "What do you mean? This is the first show you're actually going to see?" Oh man, some of that attitude, huh? Like, I was just like, "This is this is like the first show of of, of everything," and she goes. You call yourself an actor? Oh no! And Come on, oh, boy. To a show? Yeah. And huh. I was just like, no. And she goes, and why not? And I said, because I'm from Gisborne, and pretty much <laughs> yeah. show that was on, I was in it. Yeah. Right. Huh. You know, once I realized yeah. what I wanted to be, yeah. Then I didn't even want to be an actor. You know, it yeah. was just it was just fate that kind of pushed me Absolute in that destiny. Life. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and yeah, people were just like, you know, and I'd play rugby and I'd come back and I'd black eyes. Or yeah, right. And that, <laughs> you know, and people, people just couldn't fathom it, you know, and they were just like, whoa. That's crazy, but, man. Uh, you know, it, it, it came around and basically drama school, 
I had to make a choice because um, I got fairly good at uh, rugby and I had uh, – um, back then I was lucky enough to get a trial for the All Black Colts. So that's the under-21 All Black rugby team. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. And, um, and, and basically, you know, I went to drama school and I said, oh, the trial's in two weeks' time and um, if I get in, it's down south if I get in, we've got a, we've got a training camp. And then we've got a tour of Australia. And drama school literally said to me, well, it's up to you. What do you want to be, a rugby player or an actor? Because you can you go yeah. go and do the trial, but mm-hmm. we're going to let you go. We're going to release you. Wow. And I never, to tell you the truth, I never ever thought I was that good a rugby player. I only really played rugby to try and get my grandfather's, you know, approval. Because, mm. uh, you know, he was a pretty hard, he was a pretty tough man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so so I only really wow. played rugby just, just, you know, just just for me, really, and yeah. him. Yeah. And I never ever thought I was that good. It, was, it, was, it wasn't as if I ever thought, oh, man, I'm an amazing rugby player. Um, yeah, <laughs> and so I chose, I, I literally chose drama school because to me, you know, that seemed like the harder thing to get into. Wow. Wow. Um, That's yeah. Cool. That is awesome, man. Okay, so um... – all right, so so you're in Wellington. You're you've gone through drama school. We were we were trying to figure out how where did the transition to stuntman come? Because I didn't know this. I didn't know you started as a as an actor and and mm. went to drama school. Um, uh, mm. because all my knowledge of you comes from you know the the the, the, the head stuntman in Lord of the Rings. Tammy told us yeah. about how you'd be playing that guitar and getting everyone together and having <laughs> yeah. a good time. She already she already <laughs> told us your beautiful voice. Beautiful head. Oh, here. That's right. Yeah, she says you have the perfect face. She yeah, said yeah. she she missed your face, and that was the message we had to give to you. Yeah. Um, so that that's how I how I you know uh, learned of you. And so how did that transition happen from drama school to? I'm guessing because you're in Wellington, and was it around the same time the films were being, uh, you know, like. Yeah. So 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 it's, I came out of, I came out of New Zealand drama school, and um, all I wanted to to my my whole thing. Um, you know, we sat down in in, in a circle and, and they said, uh, you know, what what do you guys want to want to do? You know, get out. And, uh, mm-hmm. You know, everyone just said that they wanted to be, you know, rich, famous, sure. whatever. Yeah. And it got around to me and I said, look, I just, I honestly, I just want to keep working in an industry that I love and be able to support myself and one day a family. That was wow. it. You know, if I could wow. do yeah. that, then, then I'd made it. Did they look at you like you were crazy too, probably? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just like, what is this going on? you know. And, um, and honestly, all I wanted to do was do a um, do an All Blacks do 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 a rugby commercial or All Blacks commercial. Yeah. And um and do a war. You yeah. know. Yeah. And that yeah. was it. If it done those, then 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 that was it. I, I would <laughs> my career was made. Well, literally the the first year out of New Zealand drama school, I did um. I did the hucker on a all black commercial for the 1990 or 1991 world rugby world cup. Holy crap. And I, wow. and I was just like, Oh no, basically I've just come out of drama school already. If I get a war film, then that's it. That's my career over. <laughs> <laughs> done. I've, I haven't done that yet. And basically what happened, I did theater, uh, for seven years. Mm. Uh, did, uh, uh, you know, did, did, quite a few theater shows for seven years. And then I went up to Rotorua and I taught at a wanganga up there, a, a, a school. Um, wow. And I helped out there and then moved up to Auckland and then moved back down to Gisborne. And Gisborne, man, I love Gisborne. Gisborne's yeah. such a beautiful place. But I just, I was working at a video store and I just felt, you know what? In 40 years' time, I bet you I'm still working at this video store. Wow. So I, just, so I decided to pack back up and go back down to Wellington. Move wow. back down to Wellington. And, um, yeah, Lord of the Rings was um, auditioning. I'd never, ever heard of Lord of the Rings, you know. I <laughs> yeah. Know. But all, I, all I knew was that it was a second largest selling book behind the Bible. The Bible. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, okay, well, you know, it's a pretty popular book. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the films will be all right. Yeah. And I heard it, I heard it was shooting for like three years. And I was yeah. like, man, 
just get anything on this. Yeah. I, you know, I, I've, at least I've got three it's years. A lot of work. Of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and um, so I auditioned for Lurts, and you know, and uh, no. we all know I didn't get it. Didn't yeah. go too well. Lawrence uh, Mahori, right? Yeah, went to a good buddy of mine, Lawrence. And then, and then what happened? So, sort of like, I uh, in New Zealand, if you audition as an actor or for for a role, they don't normally really consider you for other roles. You know? Huh. Okay. Okay. They don't, you know, they, they 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 you know, I auditioned for Lurts, and then that that was pretty much me. That was it. I, <laughs> I was I was done. Um, wow. Didn't get it. And so, so I decided to believe it or not, go on set as an extra. Wow. Yeah. My, my agent actually was fully against it. Yeah. Huh. They didn't want me to go on set as an extra. They, and, 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 and so I was just like, you know what? I, I don't care. I just want to be working. And um, I think if I get on, if I get on set as an extra, I might be able to get other stuff. Absolutely. And and honestly, that's pretty much that's what happened. happened. I got, wow! And um, you know, as an extra, the Urukai, um, and then you know we were at Helm's Deep in that. Yeah. Um, you were the and, witch. You were the witch king when Frodo was stabbed, right? You stabbed Frodo. Well, yeah. You, you and that. You know what's funny? That's actually how I got into stunts. Because no. oh wow, because what happened was that. They, they, they pulled me in and they, they said to me, look, um, cause once I got on set, you know, people, people knew I was an actor and I did theater and that apart from the extras, all the extras didn't, didn't know. <laughs> didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Undercover. Yeah, no, no idea. <laughs> and what, what happened was that, um, I, I got, you know, they, uh, casting came up to me and said, look, Peter, Peter, you know, they've, they've already shot the stuff as, uh, the white witch king. Um, it didn't didn't really go as well as Peter had hoped. Wow! And uh, he wants to, you know, he wants to give it to you to, you know, for you to reshoot them. Oh my gosh! And I said, okay. So what happens? And they and they're just like, well, you've got to stab Frodo in the shoulder. And I was just like, okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'd already made I'd already made friends with all the stunt guys because believe it or not, I used to have um, a bag full of like a bag full of lollies. Yeah. Like, because I love lollies. Yeah. I've got the sweet tooth feather. Yeah. So all the stump boys used to come over and used to see me eating lollies. So they, used to, of course, they used to come and sit next to me, and I'd share out my lollies. And <laughs> yeah. sorry, you're the candy the man. Guys. Yeah. And and so what happened was that, and I knew the stunt coordinator and stuff. So I went, I went, um, and I made inquiries about whether or not I was actually allowed to do my own stunt. Okay. You know. Okay. To stab Frodo in the shoulder. Yeah. Because because I knew as an extra, you know, you you weren't allowed to do shit like that with the actors. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, so so basically went and uh, made inquiries, and then um, George Marshall Ruge, the stunt coordinator, said, "Yeah, you know what? We'll we'll let you do it." And I said, "Okay, cool." So I went and did it, and then all of a sudden I got um, we we're on, you know, I I got to know George, and I was on set in Helmsdeep, so at Helmsdeep doing the Urukai stuff. And then um, he put us through it. He, he had a he wanted he needed more stunt guys. Mm. And from me being the witch king, he knew that I was an actor. Yeah. His whole thing was that stunt guys that you know the modern day stunt guy had to know how to act. Sure. Yeah. And he, I gave him my sporting CV. I was a, a sportsman, so he held a he held a three day trial, three day workshop at a gym. And luckily enough for me, I got through the three days and, um, and yeah. And basically I get a phone call from my mate, Kirk Maxwell, who was the, um, sword master and Vigo's, um, stunt double. And, um, I, I went, went, he called me into, and Paul Shabcock and they called me into the office and I went into the office and George was there and George said, welcome to the team. Wow. And I was just like, oh my God. Dang. And the unfortunate thing was that there were a whole lot of other extras that auditioned. And wow. honestly, I was just um, put on the, I was then shunned out from the group. You know, it was uh, just like, because yeah. no yeah. one actually knew that I'd, I'd actually come from an acting background. Right. Yeah. 
But you know, well, that wasn't your fault. I mean, you auditioned for a role and you and you had to become an extra. You know, what I mean, you, yep. that's yeah. yeah, yeah. And then and then you know, luckily enough for me, um, you know, Pete kept giving me um, cameos, like I was in the second movie when um, Sam and Frodo fall down in front of the gates of Moria, the Black Gates. Yeah. Yes, you're one of the. Yeah. Um, yeah. Easterling. Yeah, I was one of the Easterling yeah. NCOs. Yeah, me and Paul Norell. And then I was also the ring wraith on the 44 gallon drum, you know, flying around <laughs> searching for the ring over the dead marshes. Oh, yeah. no way. And, wow. Um, yeah, and then yeah, and then he also gave me the cameo as a Harad leader That's on right, top man. of the Olicon, you know? Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, it was just one of those ones. And that's what actually, you know, just doing, being pulled up into the stunts team. Sure then that's what got me into creature performance because as a stunt performer, it doesn't matter what size or color you are. If you can fit into the costume, yeah. mm -hmm. then you can, you can play that character, you know, yeah. casting doesn't have any say in it really, sure. you know, sure. Cause, cause if they see your face, then, right. then basically <laughs> you're not doing a job you're, properly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. and so, yeah, so, so, so that's how I got into creature performance, but it was so funny, you know, within three months of being in the stunt community, it's, um, I went from being the newbie and, and the, the big joke within the team is that they had the A team. So they're the boys that started right from the start. Sure, the originals. Then yeah. They had the B team, which were those boys that started right from the start. Then they, they got guys at the beginning as well and they, you know, got in their team bigger. So they became the B team. And basically I was called the C team. <laughs> Literally, it was just me. You're the that only one. The, <laughs> the joke, you know? Oh, it's awesome. It was that, it was that team and I'd go, yeah. And they go, yeah, and that was a big joke. But three months C -team. of doing stunts, everyone forgot I was an actor. Um, everyone remembered me as a stuntman. And I literally went from just being a newbie in the group to doubling Lawrence. Wow. McColdy as uh, the Black Witch King and as Gothmog. And, wow. you know, and yeah, and just, yeah, it just snowballed for me. It was yeah. just crazy. Yeah. It really, really was. And then, you know, being able to um, perform in all the creature suits and stuff like that. And then that's basically Richard Taylor was just like, you know, I, he just loved me yeah. because I'd wear whatever he sure. put me into and I was happy to do it because I just wanted to be working. Yeah. And I think my sporting background helped a lot as well. Absolutely, man. Most actors don't want to be creature performers or wear prosthetics, you know, because it's hot, it's hard, oh, it's yeah. heavy. And you don't see your face. Yeah, right. You know? Whereas I was just like, you know, I can't play sport anymore because I can't make training. So I might as well do something else that, you know, that, that, puts a physical and mental toll on my body and see if I can get through it, you know, and, and, and that's, that's what I did. So, wow. you know, and I was shy anyway. So seeing my face wasn't, you know, I, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want people to see my face. You right. Know? Right. Absolutely. It was kind of, it's like it, you're explaining it. It's the perfect marriage of all those different things. You're oh, getting, you're getting your sport, you're getting your acting and, and you're still, you're on the phone, you're on the stage kind of thing. You're having that, that safety blanket. That safety blanket, exactly. Yeah, man. You know? See my face. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And 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 chances are, um, the other thing I love about creature performance is that if the director doesn't like what you're doing, normally it's because either you can't see, yeah. you can't hear, you know, the suit's restricting your movement, so you have to make your movements bigger. Oh, yeah. Or it's or it's accentuating your movement, so sure. you've got to make the movement smaller, you know. Whereas um if he doesn't like what you're doing as an actor, he doesn't like what you're doing. Right. Yes. It's yeah. it's so much more personal, get, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot more personal. Yeah. Whereas if you're a performer, you know, you've 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 literally just got to work stuff out to Yeah, it's a to, technical to, thing. To right, work. right. Man, oh. Shane uh, okay. I'm tr I'm trying to like not interrupt because I'm I'm geeking this out. This is so this is so exciting to hear your story. Um uh, uh, all these details, I mean this is all this was the cool thing about talking to Tammy too, is you know, and this is why we love giving it to the uppers because we're, we're huge nerds. We're huge geeks. We love the films. 
Uh, we obsess over the films. We, we watch all the behind the scenes stuff, but you're giving us stuff that we've never, ever heard before. And, and from your perspective and from your own personal story, it's, it's fascinating, man. I, I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> could you tell us a little bit about, because I know that that, um, and I'm asked this question and I'm going to jump off and get my power cord from my computer because it died oh, and gotcha. we've got questions on there. Yeah, no, you keep going. Um, and you just, and you keep talking as long as you want. If this is, if we get until you're sick of us, if we get three hours of recording here, I mean, that's perfect. Um, but the stunt, the stunt team on the Lord of the Rings, you know, we all know about, um, like the, the bond they had, um, uh, yeah. uh, how close knit they were. Tammy would talk about, um, you getting out your guitar and, and just a group of people. And she always talked about how it was such a party. Like being a part of the crew was like being a party. She would talk about doing makeup all day and then going out and, 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 and spending the rest of the night in the bar with your, with people that you were working with. You became friends, you became family. Um, yeah. You know, and the, and the stunt, the stunt uh, team, we know about uh, the story of, of Helm's deep and how that brought everyone together. Um, I believe in the appendices. You're talking about it. Vigo Mortens is talking about it. You guys had shirts made that hell's deep, right? Yeah, um, yeah hell's. It, it, it was like yeah. a huge bonding time. And so, what was that like? Um, if you could, if you could just tell us a little bit more about your time within that team, the stunt team. Uh, yeah. You know how to how to. Yeah. Well, you know the the thing with stunts, you know, it, and it's so funny because people always ask me, you know, what, what do you prefer better, being an actor or being a stuntman? And, um, yeah, you know, I, I love being an actor. I, I love it because, because an actor, you're, you're, you're creating, you know, you're, you're bringing your, the character to, to life. Um, how do you see it? Uh, you get treated a lot better as an actor yeah, and you make a lot more money as an actor. Yeah. The thing, the thing I don't like, uh, in that being an actor though, you're an individual, yeah. you know? Yeah everyone's everyone's you know you walk onto a set as an actor and everyone's an actor yeah so everyone's trying to vie for camera time competition you know? yeah almost yeah competition you know whereas the stunts you're a family and 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 point. the thing about stunt team is that you know there's a lot a lot of talented people out there who um who started off in stunts but unfortunately you know they they're in it for themselves yeah. they're not in it as a team yeah and and you know and and the thing with stunts is that you're a family and you've got to trust each other you know you your hand yeah you know, is it's yeah you know other people's lives are in your hands absolutely. basically yeah absolutely um and and you know where helm steep where they got helm steep right is when they cast the Urukai, they cast a lot of the Maori and Pacific Island boys. Sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah, predominantly, like ninety-five percent of Urukai were either Maori or Pacific Island. Wow. And they all played rugby, yep. rugby league, some type of physical sport. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and and the reason why they made that it, the reason why it worked in their favor and I, and they, you know, I don't think they, 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 they meant to cast it that way because all they were looking for were tall, big guys, Yeah, you know? And, you know, over here with, with rugby and rugby league, there are a lot of uh, Maori and Pacific Islanders who are tall and who are big. Yeah. So they got cast there. Um, but what happens? What what happened is that our mentality is that, especially when there's sports team, you don't want to see be seen to be the weak link, right? right. Yeah, you absolutely. Be seen to be weak. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, you know, it was it was wet, it was cold, it yeah. was heavy, you yeah. couldn't see, yeah. and you know, standing on the rain towers. Now the thing is, is that none of us wanted to be seen. You know, we were all suffering. Yeah. We were all yeah. suffering, but no one wanted to see to or, or be the one to be seen to be weak sure yeah you know? so everyone just we just trudged through it we we you know and what was what was even funny is that when they got the elves in you know they yeah. they they all had you know armor and they all had you know, and they were they were whinging like you would not believe <laughs> yeah you know and 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 so we were just like we were just toughing it out and we were just like oh those you know the elves 
you know, yeah. well, you can just imagine what we were saying. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to be derogatory to to to, to any. You know, not all of us like elves. You know, so that's okay. Just imagine, you can just imagine what we were saying. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> And then what, what basically happened was at the end of the shoot, you know, it, we were all sitting down and, and it just all came out and it was just like everyone was suffering and that, and it was just mm. like, no one wanted to be, you know, and we, we all just had a great, great joke and a great laugh about it, <laughs> wow. which is why the t-shirts came out, you know, how, how deep, but then it had a big, yeah. a, a, a line through it and it said, how's deep, how's deep, you know, <laughs> um, and but it, it was it was you know after after you'd, you'd done a big day on set it, it was it was funny because we'd all go back into town and it'd be I don't know seven a.m. in the morning and yeah. the sun's coming up and uh, you know you're still wide from yeah, doing sure, so you would just be. go to a, a, a cafe or, or a bar and yeah. sit down and just basically debrief with a couple of drinks yeah. And then, yeah, we, um, we you, you, you do, you become a really tight, strong, knitted family. But we also, um, you know, there was also a time when, you know, because I was C team and the stunt team, I got, you know, I was, you know, last on first to get let go. Yeah. <laughs> um, and when they went, when they went up to, um, when they went up and did uh, the prologue up in um, uh, the national park. What happened was that, you know, I was let go because I wasn't required. Mm. And and then, so I was just like, okay, sweet. And <laughs> what was funny is that when a workshop came to me, the, the armorers and yeah. the dressers came to me and said, look, um, we, you know, we, you know, you, obviously we like your work ethic and that. Would you like to come and work with us? I was just like, wow. yeah, of course. Yeah. So, you know, so then I went up there as, uh, with, with Weta Workshop as wow. a dresser. And, um, and we, um, yeah, we, we honestly, we, um, I struck up good, a good friendship. You know, I knew all the makeup team and that sure, from yeah. Tammy and Gino and Bill yeah. Hans, all of that from doing makeups and that, Dominic Till. And so what had happened is Sean Foote. And then what happened was that, you know, we, uh, cause I was working with Weta, we were all staying in the same, same hotel, which happened to be joined to a bar. Yeah. So, That's um, nice. So, so I went, yeah. So, so after work, we'd come back and we'd have dinner and we'd be at the bar and we'd sit down and we'd, you know, have a few shots and stuff like that. Uh, and, um, Ohakuni, we were in Ohakuni and it was just like, it was one of those ones where me and Bill Hunt, um, and, and, and one other guy, we sat there and for a wink, uh, a week, a week, we, um, we created Lord of the Rings shots. Um, we did the Iris, Iris Sauron. We did. Um, we we just made. I, I think uh, from memory, I think we did maybe twelve shots. Wow! And we we created these Lord of the Rings shots. Wow! That's awesome. Drinks. So and wow. um, I've got. I've actually got the list somewhere. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> And yeah, and and so yeah, we've 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 got this we've got the shots list. That's and amazing! Then, uh, wow. Yeah, I know it's kind of hard case, right? That so, is, it's crazy. I mean, so it's just interesting too your involvement in all the different creative aspects. I didn't know that you worked with Weta like that. That's incredible. Um, yeah, and believe it or not, me working with Weta like that, um, like I just you know because I, I was brought up by my grandparents. I, and up on a farm, you know, I just had this work ethic of just, if you're going to play, if, you know, if you're going to play hard, if you're going to play with the big boys. You, you, if you play hard, you still got to work hard. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so my whole, my whole thing was just like, yeah, if, if, if I wanted to do it, you know, there was, it was just like one of those ones where I'd made myself stay up and not get some sleep. So, but I was also lucky because I was brought up on the farm. Sure. I only need four, four hours sleep a night anyway. Sure. And you knew hard work uh, too. I mean, that's like that's that's key too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. It's, so so I was, I was lucky, but um, you know, there's uh the the team leader of Weta Workshop at the time was um, Annette Wallums, um, and Jamie Wilson. But um, Annette Wallums, she she then left uh, 
where to workshop and went to got a job at where to digital and basically that's how i got into where to digital because um what happened was that they were looking for a nighttime runner um we were finishing up uh filming the the you know the principal photography and she got a hold of me phoned me up and said look you know, um, I know you're finishing up on set. Do you have any work coming up? Wow. And I was just like, now nah, I've got to try and find work. And she goes, well, they're looking for a nighttime runner here at Weta Digital, and I think you'd be great for it. And I was just like, I'd love to do it. And, yeah, so my first job at Weta Digital was running, because back then we were still doing film, Yeah, was, was running film from the reels of film from Weta wow. Digital to Avalon. Wow. Huh. That's and then that's and then that's how I got into where the digital, you know. So and, for, and and they still let me go off and do pickups and stuff, and yeah. that was Lord and then come back and you know get into stunts and yeah. Shane, you're a you're a Swiss Army knife, my friend. Yeah, <laughs> you you can do it all, brother. You can do it all. So nah, not not at all, brother. Not oh at all. man, well I mean. But it's, Close. But, you know, going back to the stunts thing, to, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little story about how I got accepted into please. the stunts. Yeah, please. Yeah, this is what we want. Like I, said, like, like, like I was saying to you, I, I was always seating, you know? Yes. And last <laughs> on, you know, for, you know, last on, first off sort of thing. And then we were doing pickups for um, Fangorn Forest. Okay. And, and, and basically we were in, um, I think it was, uh, I think it was Elf Stage which was down on the wharf. It's, it's not there anymore. It got torn down. Wow. But it was just this big, long stage. I think it must have been, you know, over 100 meters long. Wow. I don't wow. know. And it was about maybe about 30, oh, no, probably even maybe 40 meters wide. Wow. And um, that's where we did the Fangorn Forest scene where we were running with Mary and Pippin. Mm-hmm. As you and I put them down. And then, you know, we get ambushed by the Rohan Warriors. Yeah, yep. yep. And so, so, so anyway, you know, we we spent six weeks down in Autucky desensitizing the horses. So, oh, you know, wow. we were out, out out on the farm, and and we, we we did it so that we um the horses were in straight lines, you know, three or four lines, and if we hit the deck, we knew if we were in that line within that line that you know we were safe and the horses yeah sure over us and stuff like that, and so. We um we we did it all up and and then we we got down into the stage and we get there and all of a sudden there's a camera facing from one end facing down our line so facing instead of it being uh, profile yeah. yeah so you couldn't tell that all the horses were in a straight line yeah. we're now shooting down the warehouse so yeah. you could actually see the lines of the horses wow. And the very the very first take, it was just absolute carnage because we were sitting there, and it was like it was just like you know we'd we'd rehearse it yeah. out in all time, so we kind of knew what was that, and we were there and and um, and uh, Peter Jackson would go uh, okay so um, we're uh, we're 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 we're, we're uh, <laughs> Everyone's, you know, and, and so all the Rohan are down one end with all the horses, and we're, 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 we're sort of like in, in the middle of the stage. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Stunt guys, all the stunt guys are, you know, we're, we're, in the, we're at the beginning, and then, you know, all the extras are slightly further on down. There, there, there weren't too many of them, but, you know, be, but they were, they were right down the end, so yeah. they were safe. Yeah. And basically, Pico said, oh, um... <laughs> I'll, I'll call action, and uh, the, the 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 horses will go, and 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 then I'll call and turn, and <laughs> yeah. you turn, you see, and you run, and we go, okay, cool, yeah. So we're there, and we'll sit there, and he goes, and action, <laughs> and you hear the Rohan go, yeah, yeah, and we're sitting there, and we're all facing the opposite direction with our backs to the horses, yeah, yeah, and all of a sudden you could. You, you, you could you could hear the horses coming, and then all of a sudden you could feel the oh my oh. gosh! And we're just sitting there, and we're just like, and I was looking that straight down. You could see the guys further <laughs> on down, just all of a sudden they popped their head up, 
and they're like, have we missed and turn? Yeah, it's a turn. And then all of a sudden you hear, and then turn. Turn, and literally, basically all the horses were on top of us, oh my and we God. just got absolutely mown down. <laughs> and you hear, and cut. And honestly, the set is just desperately quiet. And you hear, and reset and back to number one. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And we're just like, oh, my gosh, we cannot do a whole week of this movie. <laughs> Absolutely slaughtered. So we, we worked out this buddy system. So not everyone was going to go down now. Yeah. And we'd worked out this buddy system, whereas if you did go down, someone would be on the ground. Hmm. Um, if someone went onto the ground, someone would be standing over the top of them so that the riders could see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so very next take – we did it, and you know, and 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 he he called and turned slightly a bit earlier. Yeah, <laughs> wasn't as, as kind of, and and I turn around to to see where the horses are before I started running, and I saw this guy go down and onto the ground. I saw they didn't have a buddy, so I went running up to him just as his horse got there and his horse pulled up, and I'm just standing over his head, and I'm I'm hitting hitting the rump of the horse, and the horse goes around. Just you know, just misses him and, and goes around. Meanwhile, there's another horse just coming barreling, going as fast as it can. And I look up, and all I see is this horse's eye. Oh my gosh! Oh, no. And I just go flying back. I I fly for a good <laughs> ten meters or so, hit the deck. Meanwhile, this horse stumbles, trips and falls, oh. and lands on top of me. Oh wow! wow. And and. You know, luckily for me, it's a falling horse. So as soon as it hits the deck, it just lays there. I'm having trouble breathing because yeah, horses lucky. aren't like this. Yeah. But he's not thrashing around. And then, and then once, you know, people, you know, once his trainer and that gets in, he, he stands up and he walks off. He doesn't trample all over me, which mm -hmm. is cool. So yeah, meanwhile, I cool. hop up and I'm, I'm, I'm hunched over. And people come running up to me and they're just like, oh, my gosh, are you all right? And I said, I think I've lost some teeth. <laughs> And so I'm I'm looking down on the ground to see if I can see them anywhere. Yeah. And the medic comes over and I'd, I'd knocked a few teeth out. The horse had knocked a few teeth out. So um, oh my they gosh. uh, the uh, medic seemed to have thought that I with the impact I'd 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 actually just gone and um swallowed them. Oh my gosh! Holy. <laughs> like first this is like first thing in the morning, and oh I, they gosh. take my mask, and I've just got this massive egg. Over half of my face, <laughs> when me and the horse had head butted, and the second shot, and they couldn't get me into a dentist until that evening, until that night. Oh my god! And so I was just like, "Well, I might as well just stay at work. You know, it's a waste of time going home feeling sorry for myself." Yeah. So I might as well just stay here. So I stayed here and worked all day with my missing teeth and this big egg on my head. And um, literally after that day. Everyone accepted me into the stunts team. I'd say that was earning yeah. your stripes for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, from that too. Most people brush their teeth in the morning. Shane Rungi swallows his teeth in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then he works on until he keeps going. Yeah, he keeps going. That is unbelievable, man. So, um, how much of that too? Because you know, we've heard stories about how like Peter Jackson would, he'd like he'd like push push as far as he could without like killing people. You know what I mean? Like he he loved that that genuine. Uh, like fear he could cause in people. Uh, how much of that was, was going on with, I mean, and how many situations did you encounter like that where he should have called and turned by now, right? Like yeah. where it was, he, he wanted that genuine reaction, even from, even from you guys, like as a stunt team, did that happen as well? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, it, but it was, it was, it was one of those ones too, that, you know, you just, you know, he, in his mind, we'd, we'd rehearsed it. Sure. And we had, you yeah. know, we yeah. had rehearsed, yeah. but you know, the you know, we because of the changes yeah. that had that had that had happened, yeah, it um it just changed the whole dynamic of how how it would go, and, and you know, it's it's like that with with anything, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's you you tend to find it's uh, the one that we we always find hard, and it's not just with Peter; it's it's, it's with any director is when they've got the shot and they say just one more for safety. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for safety. And, yeah. And to tell you the truth, that's normally 
when an accident will will happen. Yeah, because oh. you let your guard down a little bit, right? They've already got the shot, right? Yeah. And you said it's not just it's not it's 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 not just Peter. It's it's every director. They've yeah. already got the shot, but they want to do just one more, just in case yeah. something's happening. Yeah. Or something happens, you know, and they say just one more for safety. Yeah. And so. Yeah, that's 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 a that's a hard case one. I mean, I mean, it's like, for instance, like, um, and it's not even, you know, it's 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 not even the, it's not even the director's fault. Like, um, like, like I sure. said, the um, for instance, the um, when we were with Mary and Pippin, and we were we we're actually doing the, the we'd 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 you know we'd uh, kidnap them, and we were actually doing the big run with yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, there's a scene where me and another mate of mine, Mana Davis, we played the scaled Urukai. So we actually had um, Dom and um, Billy. Uh, yeah, Billy, on our backs. No way! Oh, but, that's yeah, so yeah. cool. So we had oversized Urukai suits on, oh, and then we were piggybacking them, and and we, you know, what we. We ran down. We 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 had to run down through you know following this creek bed down and over the you know over uh, it was terrible terrain. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And we we were practicing it. You know, we were practicing it without the heads and that on. And we're just like, you know, this is where we were going to go. You know, we're doing a camera line up and stuff like that. And it was just like, okay, cool, awesome. Did it, and it was just like, oh yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty rough terrain, but no, it should be okay. You know, we shouldn't, you know, and and we had to slow it down because we, we were just like, well, don't forget, you know, we've got the boys on our backs. <laughs> yeah. so they're heavier, you know, we can't be going too fast. Yeah. Hide up and stuff. Dude, they stick, they stick our oversized heads on and, you know, it's great. We've just got this big gap <laughs> that we can see. You know, we can still kind of see out of it. And it's just like, okay, cool. So we practice it, me and Mana practice it without the heads on. I said, like, yep, no, nah, we're sweet, we're cool. <laughs> they go and stick the boys on us. Mm. And all of a sudden, they tie their arms around and it pulls oh, the yeah. head down. Oh, my gosh. All of a sudden, now, all of a sudden, we can't really see anything. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's just like, you know, instead of freaking out the actors and saying, you know what, we actually can't see, you know, we, we still went and did the shot. And um, we pulled it off, but it wasn't until afterwards, I, you know, Mana and I sort of like sitting down, we're looking at it, and I was just like, how much could you see? And he goes, dude, once they put us, once they <laughs> I couldn't see anything. And I was just like, yeah, same. Dude, that's amazing. So it's, it's, it's just one of those ones where, you know, people trust in you to do a job. Yeah. And, you know, and you trust yourself that yeah. you can do it. And, 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 you know, you can do it. The, where we get into trouble is when people say they can do a job yeah, and they, and they can't do it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's, that's it. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's one, you know, Pete, Peter never, ever wanted to, you know, he, he would never put us into trouble. We'd sure. never put yeah. us into sure. danger. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. just one of those things that, you know, it could go one or two ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I mean, you just got to look at that shot where, um, with Vigo and the sword. Yeah. You know, his tooth, right? Yeah. 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 Well, happened. no, no, not his tooth. Oh. Um, down, down when um Lurch fires the arrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, and he and he cuts it out. You know, he hits it with the sword. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. It, yeah, his knife and when he throws the, his knife. That was actually a real shot. Yeah. You know, and it's. You know, it's it's gold. Yeah, you know, absolutely. it's absolutely gold. Yep. You know, Pete Pete never said to do that and it was right. never meant to happen that way. <laughs> but it happened, we got it. It was captured. And it was amazing. Yeah. You know? It's really cool too, because I mean I'm thinking about like you know, that situation where that you were just talking about, you, you do it, the the dry run, you're fine. Billy and Dom get put on your backs and all of a sudden, because of the way their hands are, you're you're blindfolded. I'm thinking about like your you know your sporting background, um, your your dance experience you had, so all of your muscle yeah. memory going on, and then just even exactly. your mindset. You're you're very laid back. You're very go with the flow. You're a team. You're a team player. Like how even in the back in the back of his mind, 
like you said, Peter and, and all of the uh, people in, in charge of, of producing the films, they, they knew who they put in certain roles and how they could handle the situations. And just like even maybe stuff that they didn't know about, about your background, yeah. how that was yeah. able to exactly. allow you to do. It's just, it's incredible, man. Again, that, that, that sense of destiny coming through again and again. Yeah, well, you just have to look at, um, you know, uh, you know, we all know that the original Vigo wasn't, uh, the original Aragon wasn't Vigo, right. you know, it was yep. uh, County. Yep. And, um, and, you know, Pete, Pete knew, just had, you know, knew what he wanted sure. the character to do. Yeah. And knew that, unfortunately, the character that, the, the actor that had been cast wasn't going to be able to do it. So then, you know, instead of jeopardizing what the character's going to look like with filming, you know, he just went, you know what? Unfortunately... I'm going to have to let you go. Yeah, right. And then he recast Vigo, you know, right. and it was just, and, and, and that's, that's the importance of, it. I think that's a, that's a different, you know, Pete, Peter, Peter never, you know, never directed us. So, so that it was, um, you know, that it was dangerous situations and yeah. stuff like mm-hmm. that. But he definitely, he definitely knew the limits of his characters sure. and what he wanted them to, to do, you know? And I yeah. think that I think that's a difference is, yeah. is, is that sure. You know, you, you look at, you look at some of the stuff and yeah, dangerous ass. Yeah. But you know, that's what we get paid for a stunt guy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, that's our, that's it. That's our job. It's not, it's, it's no one's, you know, and, and the, the a saying I say to people a lot in stunts is that, you know, people are under the misconception that you know it's it's a glorified um, it's a glorified job. Yeah. Stunts is not a glorified job. You know, yeah. it's it's hard. Yeah. It's physical. Yeah. You know, your the actor gets gets all the acknowledgements. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, you know, and stunts hurt, man. Yeah, absolutely. Stunts uh, yeah. Hurt. I can imagine. The, 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 the trick is not to get injured. Sure. Yeah. And- you know? Yeah, Shane, along those lines, um, we had a, a, just a couple listeners asking, like, you know, what was the most difficult scene you trained for slash what is the training like? You know, how do you how do you keep your body, you know, peak. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pe- you know, peaked out? Yeah, uh, you, you know, I, again, it's a, it's about knowing your limits. Like, I'm 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 not a gymnast. Mm-hmm. Like, I've got I'm lucky enough. I've got good body awareness for a big guy in the air. Yeah, I'm um, just just through my sporting background of that. But yeah. I'm not a gymnast. So you you know high falls aren't normally something I would I would do because you tend to find most most high high fall specialists bar a few uh, you know they they they're like five foot six and weigh a dollar fifty oh wow. yeah. yeah okay you know, More, they're, yeah. They're, they're, they're small and they're light don't don't get me wrong though there there are a couple of amazing amazing high fall specialists but you tend to find those guys uh, so like. They, they they used you know they're like cliff divers and stuff sure, like that yeah yeah so you know so so they're specialists in the air yeah tra- trapeze um, guys or whatever yeah yeah exactly exactly so so training wise for me i mean probably the hardest thing like i was lucky that um uh like sword work in that i i did fencing for years so so sword stuff i'm you know i'm oh. i'm not too i'm not too bad at yeah yeah um, Kung Fu stuff is where I struggled because I was a boxer. Okay. Uh, so anything flashy and Kung Fu is not me. But the hardest <laughs> thing for me, is, the, the, the hardest thing for me is um, basically is, is fitness wise, especially with um, say like creature performance because um, Lion Witch in the Wardrobe, you know, I, I, uh, that was probably a big wake up for me when I did Lion Witch in the Wardrobe um, because we shot that during summer, most of it, uh, especially the big battle stuff. And I was, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a huge, huge guy. I was um, probably clocking in at, uh, what was I, 90, 94 kilos, I think, 96 kilos. Yeah. I lost within, 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 uh, Two weeks of doing the battle scene, I lost fourteen kilos. Wow! So, 
and and it was just a huge shock for me, you know, wow. just losing all that body weight and all that body mass, just running and running yeah. and running all day, every day, fighting in the hot sun with a suit on. Yeah, you had a huge, you had a full body. Wasn't so, that uh, the, like the Centaur suit, right? Yeah, Minotaur. Minotaur, Minotaur, Minotaur that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so, you know, and just carrying your weapon and sure. fighting and, and honestly – so then, basically, for me, it was just like, you know what? This is um, when I had when I when I realized I was doing the next Narnia movie, I um, I I bulked up. I, you know, I bought yeah. a home gym and I just started pumping, yeah. just so that I could get bigger, so wow. that I knew that if I lost a whole lot of mass, I still had the strength sure. to carry yep. the suit. Yep. And then what I'd do is I'd go into like um, you know, five weeks out, six weeks out. I'd start going into saunas and just start doing push-ups and sit-ups and exercising in a sauna so that my my, my body, yeah, yeah, my body get used to the heat. Wow, that is crazy. I never thought about that. Being in the sauna to get used to that, you know, yeah, big costume that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I just yeah, yeah, the... you know, and it's just it's just one of those ones uh, because I don't really like um, I don't really like fans and I don't I'm not a big fan of cool suits. I I like I like to the the body to to adapt to the temperature that it's in, you know, and learn to cool down and learn to learn to you know just basically adapt to 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 what it's wearing. Because um, the trouble with cool suits, as soon as you plug them in, it just goes from extremely hot to extremely cold. Oh sure, yeah, sure. Get your get your core temperature down real fast and real quick. But what tends to happen is as soon as you unplug it your body seems to warm up twice as quick and twice as hot. Sure, yeah. So basically every every break you get, you find people who plug into cool suits always want a cool suit plugged in, always want their cool suit plugged yeah. in, you know, chance they get because they're overheating. Sure. Whereas if you teach your body yep. to, to, to get used to that heat, and all you've got to do is, you know, keep hydrated and um and, and know your limits, know your boundaries. Like for instance, when we did the um when we did the goblins in, in the Hoblet Hobbit, yeah. um, you know, they, they, they put my first the, the first time they put my head on, I um they had the they they said, Oh, we're gonna plug in the fan. I was just like, Oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> they, a, they actually had a little fan inside the head. Yeah. And I was just like, Wow. And they plugged it in. I was just like, "Oh my gosh, this is this is actually quite 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 nice." You yeah. know, and I was just like, "So, um, where's the air coming from?" And they were just like, "What do you mean?" And I said, "Well, we we you know the fan. We, where's it sucking the air from?" Yeah. You know, is it is it through the mouth? Is it? Through, and they go, "Oh no, it's just um, it's just in in the head to keep you cool." And I said, "Hang on, so the head's sealed. The fan's not sucking." Air in, <laughs> and we're just like, no, no, yeah. it's just to, to, to keep the air that's in there circulating so you feel cooler. I said, Look, can, have you got one without a fan? And they were just like, Yeah, I said, Can I have that one, please? <laughs> and they're just like, Why? And I said, Because in my mind, the air that's going through there, it's dragging it from the outside, so I feel as though in my mind, I'm actually getting. Oxygen. Yeah, right. It's an actual fact. I'm not. Right. Yeah. So you're breathing so, more than yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to actually breathe more oxygen sure. than I think I have. Sure. And and, and run out of my sure. and, and enough. We had extras dropping just through lack of oxygen. Yeah. Just fainting because. Holy crap! I wouldn't even think about that. That's amazing. Exactly. You know, and and so that was it. Whereas if you didn't have the fan, sure, yeah, you'd start heating up and so that, and you'd feel the oxygen depleting in the air. So you'd have to calm and settle yourself down yeah, and yeah. just slow your breathing down so that you weren't breathing more oxygen than you could actually get into the head, into the mask. Wow, huh. that's amazing. So so technology definitely changed. I'm guessing with with the suits from. Uh, Lord of the Rings to the time you were in the Hobbit. What what other ways? Because that was one of our questions. Was what were the how was the experience different from the Lord of the Rings to the Hobbit? How was it similar? How was it different? What is well, was one of the experiences more? Um, I don't know. Did it feel like a reunion coming home and, and being with with family? Yeah, you know what's funny is that everyone thought that. 
everyone wow. thought, you know, this was going to be a big reunion. Yeah. You know, everyone, everyone just had such a good time mm-hmm. on Lord of the Rings, you know, as, as a crew. We were, we were a family. Yeah. Wow. Um, and, and it was an amazing time in New Zealand history. And everyone kind of thought that was going to be the same with The Hobbit. It, it was unfortunate that it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't the reunion that everyone thought it was. And for for me, the probably the biggest change for me between the um, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit is is basically the the change from filming, really. Yeah. Um, oh, from yeah. when I when I mean change of filming. I mean, filming from, you know, it, Lord of the Rings, we shot on film. Thousand feet in a can. Sure. Uh, probably about a dollar, dollar seven to a dollar 12 cents a foot. Wow. So, you know, that's over a thousand feet in, in, in a roll of film. Wow. So, so like, you, you know, they basically filmed until they got the shot. And then once they got the shot, they moved on. Yeah. Hmm. When it came to digital, however, you're not wasting you're not wasting any money filming yeah so yeah. some of those some of those scenes like for instance the goblins you know we're just walking around we you know instead of in film you shoot we would go once around the track and then we'd stop and then they'd, they'd go back review it and see what changes they have to make hobbit man we we did that you know four or five times huh, which is wow. why Rolling, rolling. The cameras are just keep rolling, and we just keep running around and around and around and around. You know, so instead of filming it for for you know thirty seconds, forty five seconds, would mm-hmm. still be going five minutes later, and that's wow. why people were dropping. You know, because it yeah. was just hot, it was exhausting, yeah. and there was no rest. I, I know, I, I know some of the scenes that the hobbits did. You know, they they just kept rolling the camera and they had to do the whole scene and, you know, and the whole scene was like about five minutes long. Sure. Jeez. And then, the, yeah, that, they, and they just keep filming and filming and filming. So, so to me, that's probably, that was probably the, the biggest, the biggest change is that, is that, you know, they, they just, they just kept going and going and going it's, and going because, because they didn't have to stop because it was they, they weren't wasting money on film. Sure, and then you've got sure. less downtime in between where you guys are bonding and talking, and there's and you're more yeah. exhausted when you are resting, right? Exactly, yeah. more exhausted, and not only that, you know, people are just going, "Why are we still going?" You know, and yeah. then, and then they change the camera setup, and then they do it all again. You know, instead yeah. of. Um, that was that was probably one of the one of the hardest things, and sure. and. You know, and and then from there as well, it was just like, you know, I'll I'll probably stick my head out and on the chopping block when I say that. But but to me, the the other thing as well was that Lord of the Rings, you know, it, it was um, huh. it was it was groundbreaking, and Special. we had a lot of pros- yeah. we had a lot yeah. of prosthetic stuff, you know. So yeah. the actors were actually acting with the characters in front of them. Yeah, yeah. You know? They yeah. had them there, apart from the trolls. Sort right. of thing, and you know, but even even Gollum, you know, and yep. he was in a mocap suit, and he was there, yep. you know, right. right. When it came at when it came to the Hobbit, you know, there was a lot of stuff that was just green screened green and screen, right. just, and you can you can really see it, like even the goblins, you know, we had yeah. all the suits, and then all of a sudden, you know, we take all the all the heads off be, and then you know everything was just going to be put in digitally and wow. yeah it was just yeah it was just a different beast you know sure yeah and that, i mean that's kind of refreshing to hear you say that because i think we all as as like fans you know we and we we're invested it in it from the other side right like we we could definitely feel that we could feel that difference you know and and Lord of the Rings was the original, yeah. right? That's that's the that's the original yeah. tour, and The Hobbit was kind of like a reunion tour, and and we and we yeah. missed. I, I think I think um, sometimes technology can um, like overshoot its time, and oh. you know, and it's like we, I, you know, when you watch Lord of the Rings and you know that um, that there are prosthetics involved, and you can you can see the 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 stunt man or the the actor underneath that. And that comes through, whereas, like you yeah. said, in the Hobbit, it's it's digitalized, and it's like I can I can tell I, I can't I lost I lost the person in that, 
yeah and, exactly yeah. there's no there's no connection to it you know sure. and, and that's that was probably the 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 thing for me was just like um like i never ever realized you know why I'd get a lot of work from Richard Taylor and that yeah. with um, doing preacher performance and that. And it wasn't until I was on um, uh, Prince Caspian actually over in, cause I never really used to like to watch the monitor. I, I, you know, I'm not really into watching me perform, you know, unless I really had to because I wasn't hitting a mark or, or something like that. You know, I'd go and watch my, but what it was, was that um, I watched, um, I, I went back to the monitor and, um, and Andrew Andrew wanted to, to to for me to go and have a talk to um, one of the extras who who was in the scene um, because and I didn't know what he was what he was on about and he goes you know just to just to you know to see how he can move better in the suit yeah. in the minotaur suit and I had a look and I was just like oh, I get it now I get why yeah. they like me because. I think it's just my acting background is that, you know, I bring a character to life as opposed to being a man in a suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Sense. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, so, and, and yeah, it was, it was just one of those ones, like when you've actually got someone who can perform and yep. is actually, uh, actually brings a character to life, yep. you walk into a room or you walk into a scene and people sense and feel that character. Like sure. when I, you no, know, it's General Opman, or even as a, if if I'm an orc or a yukai. When yeah. I walk in, I walk in as that character, yes. and people feel the presence of that character. Yeah, you know. Well, and it's like you talked about you 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 brought that um you brought that so many times that it resulted in in Peter giving you that role as the Harad um yeah. leader. Yeah, you know. I mean, that's and that's exactly what you're talking about. That performance came through. He saw that in you and was like, "Dude, we got to we got to get Shane like take 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 less put less on him and get him out there, yeah, man." <laughs> you know? So that can come through even more clearly. Oh, yeah, but, 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 yeah, but what was funny in that scene was that that originally though, like I was only supposed to I was only supposed to do like 5 5 seconds of it. I was just supposed okay. to be flesh in character sure really yeah and like i came on like i've been done up and you know what's funny even though you could see my face that was actually one of the hardest makeups to do you get out that of here ages that's because crazy about layering you know and people look at it and they had no idea that i had three layers of clay on me really you know, they'd, they'd paint a layer of clay on me Wow. And then they did it dry and then they paint another layer. Well, the scarifications go on first. Oh, sure, the true. Yeah. And then they go and paint it. And the reason why they do three layers is so that when they when they spray paint it and they do the cracking, you know, if if bits of it flake off, there's still clay underneath. It doesn't flake off sure. and it mm -hmm. shows your skin. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. So I that that makeup still took four, four and a half hours. Power of three, Shane. We're always talking about the power of three. Tolkien all the time in Lord of the Rings. There's always the power of three. So that three layers make sense. Um, oh, really? Yeah, all the time, dude. Oh, it's like That's just funny. I'm starting to see three everywhere. It's getting kind of concerning. I feel like Jim oh, Carrey in 23. Crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, yeah, well, you know there were three of me, right? Three of you. <laughs> no, no, was, <laughs> shoot, man. I was like, well, there's three of us talking right now. Oh, my gosh. All right, Shane. Hey, uh, actually, along with the makeup thing, you know, the um, just being the, oh, gosh, when you're when you're an orc or a goblin or what have you, how long does it take to get in and out of those, like, suits or, or the makeup? Like, is it is it a really long time? Dude, it really just depends. If um, if you're a, if your background, it takes bugger all. It takes, like, um, you stick on your Lycra's. You um yeah. you know you jump into the arm and and in your legs which probably takes you about five minutes. You stick on your your boots which takes on another couple of minutes. Mm. You go to armor and costume, and most people actually wanted um if you have a look, uh, most of the stunt guys tried to get long pants and long um tunics so okay. they could hide the pads and that underneath them. Um, dude, you, and, and, and the, and the head of the mask is just a pull on mask sure. and it just tucks in. So, oh, okay. so okay. literally probably about 20 minutes. Oh, gotcha. Wow. Okay. It's, it's, it's when you're a hero or a close up, yeah. or, um, then, then you're in the makeup chair for a, a minimum two and a half, 
three hours. How oh, long okay. did the Harad okay. leader? How long did that take? Because we didn't really. Yeah, didn't... Harad leader was about four and a half hours. Holy crap! Yeah, that's crazy. My, my longest makeup, though, longest make, my longest makeup was, believe it or not, the White Witch King though. Okay, and I want to the White the White Witch. I want to ask me took. See, that was about a seven-hour makeup, a six-and-a-half-hour makeup, and then I had seven layers of um, costume as well underneath what? that. Okay, because I wanted wow. to ask you about the White Witch King. Because I, I, so when we were telling our group that we were going to be talking to you, I, I, I went through and looked at different pictures, and I, it, it's hard to find pictures of you as the White Witch King, like not from the film, but yeah, the the face of the White Witch King kind of looks like your face distorted. I don't know. Was that a part of the design, or is that just like was that is that coincidence? Am I seeing yeah, the number three again? It's just that's just coincidence because what happened is that the original mask was made for um, someone else. Uh, okay, I think it was Brent. Brent. Uh, I want to say Brent McKenzie, but okay. I think it was Brent McIntyre. Or he was the original. He okay. he actually worked with a workshop. And um, they, you know, he he worked on the White Witch King, and and they, everything was made to him. Got um, it. Got it. it. Then what happened was that, um, you know, unfortunately for him, he he'd never done any sort of performance or anything like that. He was he he was actually a technician. Oh wow. Uh, and so, and you know, it it didn't really portray across to what Peter was after. Yeah, it's a big moment. You gotta you gotta nail that moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So 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 then um yeah, so then luckily enough for me, Man. I knew I was an actor. Um Man. and and they, they they put me in it. So that's amazing. And then yeah, so so when they stuck when they stuck the mask on me, they had to it wasn't it wasn't built for me. So then <sighs> they had to they had to make it fit my face, which yeah. then changed the shape of the original mask and it actually yeah followed the contours of my of my facial wow. structure wow wow because because they had to they then had to make it the hardest thing with that one too is that that was actually one of the hardest costumes of of, of worn simply because yeah all i had was a little slit in in between my lips sure. so i could breathe wow. um because because the nose didn't line up, so I couldn't breathe through my nose. Oh my gosh! Shame. Right? Little slit. And like, I said, I said, you know, this is one of the cool things. I actually got to sit in Pete Jackson's camper. No um, way. And I was in there all day, just and all I had to do, I couldn't really drink water because I couldn't really go to the toilet because I already had the hands and that glued on. Oh my gosh! Um, so I was just drinking smoothies. That's all I had. To, <laughs> And then at the end of the day, they were just like, um, we're not going to get to the scene. You can take Shane out and we'll be started all again tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That'd be nuts. But a nice day sitting and, and drinking smoothies in Pete's, in Pete's trailer. That's not too bad, right? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, we have a few. This is, Dude, this is amazing. We it, Okay. Can I get you recorded saying that maybe we could come back for a part two sometime? Is that possible? Where we could just hear more of your stories? You mean a part two of a um, podcast? Yeah, like could we do this again sometime in the future? Is what I'm asking. Yeah, man. For sure. Okay, beautiful, sure. beautiful. We have some because <laughs> our our uh, our our patrons on Discord have given us some questions. So if we could uh, throw out a couple of those, as you want to ask some of those real quick, because they've got some cool questions they want to ask you and want to get your yeah. answers on those. Look, look honestly, yeah, you, yeah, you just yeah, we're not taking too much of your time, are we? Are we? Oh hell no! Okay, okay. okay. Uh, no, honestly, it's 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 one of those it's one of those ones. You know, what, whatever I've got on, I'll 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 make enough time to you know. Honestly, it's yeah. We love podcast. you, brother. This is this is amazing, yeah, man. Is, oh no, you're all huge. good, brother. You're all good. Uh, well, we got I got a couple uh, folks have asked kind of some similar questions. You know, kind of like you know fondest memory um from Lord of the Rings, and also just like maybe your your le- your favorite. Um, Who was asking? Is that Phil? Phil, and- yeah. Phil, Mandy, um, and, and Susie are all kind of asking about just fondest memory from Lord of the Rings, and then possibly you know your favorite uh, character or your role you know that you that you were, that you were in there. So in, just, in Lord of the Rings, yeah, specifically Lord of the Rings, yeah. 
Yeah, man. Um, look, my my fondest, oh, man, the the whole the whole That's experience yeah, is, yeah, a, yeah. is a fond memory, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, from from a probably from a personal point of view, my fondest memory was um, being called up into into the stunt team by George Marshall Ruge, you know, uh, international uh, stunt coordinator. Um, and just him trusting that, that, that I could, I could do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and, and, but, but then also, you know, just, the, just the bond that we made with, with everyone, not just the crew and, and that, yeah. but also the actors and yeah. that as well, you yeah. know, uh, the, the bond with Vigo and John Rhys Davies and Bernard Hill and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and everyone, it was, um, the, the whole thing. Yeah. Is a fondest memory, you know, me, me actually being accepted into the stunts team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. That, yeah. that was a pretty fond memory. Um, That's awesome. but then, you know, there's, there's, uh, the, my favorite character. Yeah. I, I would probably say my favorite character have to be the Harad leader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was just, fun, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I got up there and I was just like, you know, they were just like, oh, look, um, you know, you're on top of this big olifant and and you're, you're just smashing and crashing through yeah. minions on the thing, you know? And I was right. just like, cool. Well, that sounds like fun. That's you awesome. know, it, yeah. sounds like, it sounds like something that I don't get to do often. Yeah. Uh, you know, and so I'm just wreaking havoc and just having a good time. And, and you know, and that's what I did. My favorite, that's, yeah. My favorite moment of that of that scene is where you're um, I think it cuts away and you're, you're you, like the, you, you're like controlling the Oliphant to just smash these horses. And this, just yeah. this, this bloodlust rage, like scream comes out of you and you're like almost sh- like tremoring and shaking. <laughs> I, that is one of the most, and I think it's like right after that, that Aomer kind of picks the spear up and comes after you. But that moment, man, it is just, because you, you are able to make us hate you so much. Yeah. <laughs> and you're such a lovable person that that is the most that that's acting, bro. That's acting. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. But anyway, I love that moment and I think that's cool. That's your favorite character. Um Okay, so someone just asked, who asked that question as? Just uh, now. Phil, Phil. Phil yeah. Phil also wanted to know cuz mm-hmm. the the Amazon TV show is coming out. If you were given an opportunity to go back in Middle Earth in a different form and work on this Amazon TV show? Is that something you would be open to? Is that something you want to do? Is that something you're pursuing? Dude, I, I, I would love to. You know, it, I, if, if it came down this way, um, you know, I, I would love the opportunity to, to work back um, in Middle Earth. I'd love to, the opportunity to be back on a, a, a television series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, look, I, it, it doesn't really matter to me. It doesn't really, but if, if they want me to empty rubbish bins, I just go and do that. I just love to work, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to, to be honest, I, I probably a, something that I, I do like doing now is, is actually being, a, a creature performer, uh, coach. Oh, wow. and, okay. Yeah. In teaching people to to actually, you know, create characters and connect with characters because because you tend to find a lot of um, movement coaches and they come from a movement background. Yeah. Um, and whereas I've come from an acting background. So I'm I'm all about, you know, if if there's any if there's any people out there that that actually uh, into trying to get into creature performance and they want to know the best way to, to become a character, become a creature. My, 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 probably my, my biggest thing to them is the breath. Oh, it's it's not, it's, it's not the movement. It's, it's nothing like that. It's, it's actually the breath. Wow. Find out, find out how your character breathes because from you, you believe it or not from there, because because if you if you take it from a movement point of view, you know you can you can you can teach yourself to move differently, right? Yeah. yeah. But you're looking at it from a, a, a movement base, a, a movement point, and then what happens is that when you start getting tired and you start getting fatigued, 
you start, you're still breathing like you. You're still, and, and that muscle memory takes over. And then you start to lose the character because now it's you getting tired. Yeah. Whereas if you connect the breath, if you start off with the breath and visualizing you being that creature and how that creature breathes, you're now actually connecting the breath with how he moves, which is pretty much what happens in general life. Yeah. Shane, when that is that is br- feet with with breath, you start yeah. moving differently. So if you connect your, 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 the breath first and then you go through that way and then start visualizing your environment, your size, and then the, you, you then start bringing it to life. Mm-hmm as opposed to trying to install them and, and, and you know, and to, to try and put a style on it. The other reason that I say connect with breath is that you tend to find movement coaches and I'm, I'm not saying, you know, there's, there's a right or a wrong, but they all try and get people to move exactly the same. Huh. Whereas if you connect it from a breath, you know, like, like, you know, we're all humans and we all mm-hmm. walk, we all walk the same, but everyone's different. Sure. Yeah. Everyone, different everyone you know we all stand upright and we all walk on two legs but our gates and our walk are all different and it's the same it's the same with creatures yeah. you know you can all look the same but it's how you breathe and how you connect and how you bring that creature to life and if you believe in that creature if you believe that you are that creature then you've brought that creature to life it doesn't matter you know it's 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 not for someone to say, oh, you're 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 walking wrong. Yeah. You know, you've all got to walk like this. It's just like, well, no, because because what's the point of getting a thousand and one different people to play this character if you all want them to walk exactly, exactly the, the same. same? Right. Yeah. Wow. Shane, uh, that is Bruce Lee deep, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That is, I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding you. Before I go, before I go into my classroom every day, before we sit here and podcast every week, I'm going to go connect with breath. I'm not even kidding, man. That is, that is. I felt like I was on the set. I was on the we're, set we're, and I was getting I don't, coached I don't, by Shane. He can't see, see us right I now. Right? Lucky, look, look, honestly, I was lucky enough to um, last year be um, taken over to uh, Edmonton um, uh, School of Arts. I, I got taken over there to do a master's class on uh, creature performance and motion capture performance. And um, and yeah, the students I had that that was uh, that was the one thing I did. And and I was lucky enough that um, Chris Anderson, who, who brought me over, he's the head of the um, of the um, department over there, the the acting and the, well, not the acting, but the film department. Mm-hmm. He, he, you know, and they had a director, a couple of directors over there, and they were just like, well, that's that's actually probably one of the, the, the best points we've, we've ever got because you're not looking at it from a movement point of view. You're actually looking at it from, from you know, from actually breathing in and breathing out. Wow. That, that's, that's beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's epic. I, I don't know what do we, how well, do we, that's just, just that's just my take on it you know sure. everyone's no but it sounded I'm amazing i'm pretty sure movement coaches will, will look at it and go oh you know <laughs> you never look at it from a breath point of view but you know that's that's my point of view well, and shane that's what people that that's how people react to genius they they, they you know <laughs> they don't know what to do with it brother i mean that's like I am sitting here. What? Well, how do we even move on from that? What do we do? Well, <laughs> like, I mean, I like, wanna... like Shane, when you were talking there, I literally like we got off the mic. And I looked at Lane. I was like, I saw like the last thing I thought you were going to say. Me too. Honestly, Me too. like the last thing, and so it kind of it's mind blowing. I felt like a student, you know, sitting there like, whoa, like and, that's just another perspective that is outside yeah. of the box to me. That's cool. And, and when you're talking about breath too, right? And you and you brought up the point because I, I do think it's it's totally right. Like if you if you have a thousand people there and you want them to all move the same, then what is the point? That's exactly right. And your breath is, is um, you know, I'm thinking about uh, the belief um, within the Maori culture that your breath is, is your spirit, right? That's, that's your, that's exactly. part of your, part of your mana, your essence. And well, ex- exactly. And, 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 and that's exactly right. And, and that's probably one of the reasons why I look at, you know, you know, like the honging, for instance, yep. you, yeah. When you touch someone, noses you know, and you breathe and, yes. you touch noses and, and you breathe in at the same time. Yep. So they're yep. sharing the same breath. Same breath. You now become connected and you're now one. Yeah. And, and, and it's also the way that we're all different. Our, our spirits are all individual and it, and it comes from that breath. Be- dude, that's beautiful, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, great. 
Wow. Oh, my mind's blown. My yeah. mind's blown. That's beautiful. We have any um, more questions asked? You expect me, you're expecting me to say, well, well, you need to go to the gym and you need to bench press uh, <laughs> a, a minimum of 100 and, 150 pounds and uh, do four. No, man. No, no. You not know, at I, all. Think, I think it's that great. we were expecting you to, but it just, but it's still just, it's the way yeah. you put it was so beautiful. That was, yeah, that's cool. That's going to inspire a lot of it's people. It's a good insight. It's a look at, you know, like that, all, I think all of that stuff is fascinating. Just like there's different parts and facets to to filmography, like the yeah. the, the movie making, you know, process and things. I don't know. Just it's cool to kind of see behind that the scenes and, and hear from somebody who's who's done it, coaching people. It's just awesome. Um, along that line, just a quick. I was on your Instagram. I love your Instagram, man. <laughs> it is great, uh, dude. We, uh, Lane and I were talking about the uh, the food reviews, man. Shane, can I tell you something? Yeah. When I, I was I was watching because I'm, I'm I was getting ready for this I'm like I wanna I wanna make sure I've, I'm up on everything in Shane's life and and I want to see if there are any new food reviews yeah and we were watching the one with the with the pudding putting it in the turmeric right <laughs> and you bro you flipped the camera around and uh, it was you putting it in your mouth and I had the phone I had my glasses off and I can't see without my glasses so the phone was real close to my face I started yeah. opening my mouth I think I wanted you to feed me. <laughs> Because that's what usually happens is I see that food and I'm like, Shane, man, I don't know, dude. His 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 views on the food are perfect and he makes me want to eat it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So. so when are you – I guess the question that we're leading to well, is when do you start in the food blog? Yeah. You know what? I've, 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 often, I've often thought about it. And, and it's funny because I, I'll tell you how the whole – food thing came about it was when i was uh doing wolverine over in australia and and, and i came across these um belgium chocolate dipped bananas huh. oh and 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 i had and i saw one and i was just like oh yeah they sound pretty cool and honestly i bit into it and i was just like omg <laughs> this is just amazing oh. So and and I love food, bro. I love food. I'm not just about the taste, you know. Yeah. I'm about the texture. I'm about the aftertaste. I'm about the journey it takes you on while it's you're the experience. eating. Experience, yeah. It's the experience, exactly. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I just have to share this. And and it's funny because it, you know when when I did it, people were just like, oh my gosh, that was so funny. The yeah. look on your face. Yes. You first bit into it, and you could. It was just like you people could see were just it. like, my yeah. Yeah. My mouth started to water because <laughs> your face is just like so amazing that yeah. you know you you could see the flavors yes. that were running through it, and and I yes. was just like, oh okay, so and so I started doing it, but probably the reason why I haven't I haven't carried on one is because I, I you know I didn't think it was that interesting. I thought, oh man, people oh. would probably find it you know probably find them quite quite boring. Oh, um, and I'm sick of them. Although, no. although I did get a lot of, I did get a lot of comments when I did uh, one, one of them when I was on a wrinkle of time, and it was a, um, it was just like this pie, little pie, and I put the whole thing in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and I got a lot of comments on that. Yeah. But the, the the other thing I realized why, um, you know, is is that I'm honest, and yeah. like well, sure. we, last year when I went over to Edmonton to Canada, a whole lot of my Canadian mates were like, oh, you should try. And I've forgotten the name of the place, such and such burger. You know, they're, they're, they're amazing. And a whole lot of my Canadian friends would go, oh, yeah, you should try these burgers. You should try these burgers. <laughs> and, and, and I got there and, and they, and, and I asked, I asked, um, I asked Chris and, um, if, um, if they could take, if they had one there and yeah. they said, yes, they did. And they said, look, we'll take you there. I said, awesome. So I, I, you know, I, I ordered and I got it. And I, and I just remember when I look back on the Instagram, it's just like on the post. <laughs> Straight away, you know, my I, I was a bit disappointed about the size of it. Yeah, because it wasn't it wasn't as big as it looked in the sure, picture. Sure, you know. <laughs> um, but then I was like, just, yeah, but size doesn't matter. You know, the the taste could be. And 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 I started eating it, and I was just like, I was just like, yeah, it's it's not a bad burger. And that's <laughs> that's how you know it's, it's it's. I'm not that impressed with it because right, right, yeah. it's not a bad burger, which means it's not a good burger either. <laughs> <laughs> but. But it, you know it was okay. It was okay. But then I, you know, but then I was just like, you know, if I'm brutally honest, you know, the the burger fuel burgers back in New Zealand kicks its beep. You know, yeah. and I yeah. was just, I um, I'd I'd probably find it 
quite hard if someone goes to me, oh, you know, you should you should come and try try you know so because you know if people start following your food blogs and it, you know people start oh, inviting you to sure. to their places to try their stuff. Right, right. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, but if they if they actually get, I I can't hide the fact. Yeah, right. But, like when I was in China and I went to this Chinese restaurant and I tried, I tried um, fermented tofu in this. And honestly, yes, the look of my yeah. face was just like, yeah, it, it tastes exactly how it sounds. Correct. <laughs> so, Good God. You know, I, I couldn't hide it. If someone, yeah. if someone invited me to their place and said, oh, you should try this. It's, it's, it's amazing. And if I didn't think it was amazing, I, I, I can't hide it. You yeah. know, I can't say to people, yeah, let them know. you know, it, yeah, you should definitely go. There. But when I find something, I'll I'll go there. Like uh, Zany Zoo's ice cream, out in Lower Hut. Like mm. I'm I'm a massive I'm a massive massive fan of Zany Zoo. It's it's one of the best soft serve ice creams. And their halloumi cheese, out of this out of this world. Like I I I take people down there and I send people there all the time and they try it and they're just like oh my gosh. But you know, and, but there's another place, a, a, a little Chinese restaurant called Great Wall out in Avalon and it's about a 20 minute drive and I'll drive all the way out there just to get their orange beef and chili egg oh, drive. Man. That's yeah. amazing, yeah. dude. We, we love that because we're, we're always, uh, you know, we're always eating dinner before and, and we go through different phases of what we eat. And, and yeah. so, so just so you know, uh, um, you have an open invitation to Amanda, Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. And whenever you <laughs> yeah. get here, we're going to take you down to the village and we're going to have you, I mean, you can try whatever you want, but they're pulled pork. With Ooh, col- I like pulled pork. It's and it's southern style pulled pork, so it's a little spicy. And they put coleslaw on top of the sandwich, and it's on a big split half bun. Okay, can 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 I just ask one thing? Yes, yes. Oh boy. The coleslaw, please don't say they make it with red cabbage. Ooh, N- I I no, don't know. No. White cabbage. Yes, it's with white cabbage. Yes. Oh yeah. What? Well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's not yeah, red cabbage. Yes. Red cabbage. Red cabbage to me has just got this bitter taste no. like Brussels. No. And I hate Brussels. No. Sprouts. It's it's that good. It's the good creamy sweet. Yeah. Coleslaw. Nice. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, baby. Yeah. So just so you know, whenever you want to come make an Instagram post, we'll put you up here as long as you want. You know, it's <laughs> it's an open invitation, brother. But we. So love- you reckon you 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 reckon I should I should I should uh you, I should carry on doing my food blogs. I oh, think yeah. you should. I think oh, you yeah. should. And I you know what I like that you're honest about it too because, you know if I'm if I'm, on the edge of a knife and I'm thinking do I try this thing I go look it up and I'm like hey has Shane tried it did Shane like it <laughs> yeah what's Shane's, the review out right there? What's, what, what I'm, they say? I'm going yeah. to Shane I'm gonna let him he's gonna guide my my taste buds you know it's, it's gonna sway me one way or the other so oh, man. yeah brother wow. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I, I I also thought about being an influencer as well, you know, and but and you can call it Rungy's reviews. Oh, there it is. That would be sick. I you know, love but, it. But 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 again, you know, again, I'll 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 be honest. I'll I'll be brutally as honest. As you should and, be. And, and you know that's uh, you know that's 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 probably going to be my downfall. I'll, <laughs> I'll probably have a lot of I'll probably have a lot of. Uh, I'll probably have a lot of studios that'll probably never hire me again as an actor. <laughs> Oh well, you know I'll have to rely on 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 the studios that do like me as an influencer to 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 you know afford to actually eat so I can do some Instagram blog food blogs. <laughs> it's all big cycle. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, um, you'll you'll know if I'm if I'm not doing very well because because all my food blogs will be on which two minute noodles are better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Oh, that's amazing. Um, wow. <laughs> well, uh. Man, we've kept we've kept Shane. We've we've had him on here for two hours. This is amazing, Shane. Um, well, sorry, you know, you guys no. must be getting tired. No, no man, I, it's actually great, we gotta man. after yeah, this we're gonna bedtime. You know, uh, you, that's that's the theme. Whenever we get together and record, it's always uh, you know we're we're to bed two or three in the morning because we're we're gonna do a uh, we're gonna do a regular episode after this, record it, and it'll go out and not this week but next week. But. Um, it's yeah, like, I mean, so I, we would love we would love to talk to you again sometime if if uh, you know whenever it works into your schedule because we would so we're also doing um so what we do I don't even know if I have told you it's it's no you haven't yeah it's a it's a read <laughs> what we do is it's a read through of um, Lord of the Rings we started uh, about a year ago and Ezra had been doing some podcasting he he has a Star Wars podcast he has a Game of Thrones podcast he has crazy um every, everything um 
And so we were like, we, we had just re- reconnected our friendship. We hadn't seen each other for years. Yep. And we were like, dude, this would be really kind of cool to, to start this up together. And we hadn't read Lord of the Rings for a while. So what we do is we go through and we do a chapter by chapter reread. And it's like a book club. But we also talk about um, the upcoming Amazon show. We talk about, um, uh, you know, people who worked in the movies, what they're doing now. Um, and we share people's Tolkien stories. So um, we have a, a community of people who listen every week. Um, they're in a Facebook group. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll make posts. They'll share stories. They'll give support. And it's become this really cool community of people that um, from all over the world that have gotten to know each other. So yeah. um, it was actually uh, Sarah's suggestion last year. She was like, why don't you contact Tammy? Why don't you contact Shane? And see if they would want to talk about their their stories, share their stories from their time in Middle Earth. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, "That's genius." I said, "I wonder, I you know, if they if they would want to." And um, so that was just kind of it. Like the Tammy, um, the talks with Tammy, tales with Tammy. That was a bonus episode, and this is going to be a bonus episode. And so, okay, so here you go. The surprise that was supposed to happen tonight, yeah, was you were going to be sitting here, and right now we were going to dial Tammy's number. <laughs> And Tammy was going to come through, and you guys were going to be able to just talk, and we were just going to kind of sit in on it. Yeah, it was going to be great. Oh, my gosh. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. So, And she wasn't able <laughs> to get – I haven't spoken to I, – honestly, I haven't spoken to Tammy in so, so long. Oh, and man. see, that's what we were hoping for. We knew we wanted it to be like this reunion thing. So maybe we can still work it out in the future, and it, it'll just be a surprise for her. Yeah. You, um, you, know, you know I've just started getting teary right now, right? Oh, man. <laughs> See, like honestly, Timmy Lane, I love Timmy Lane, man. True. There's um just just so many people that that you know we we all became real close and real and yeah. um yeah. you know real good friends and and she was one of them. She's she's one of those people that that helped me helped me get to where where I am today. Um, and she's just such an amazing strong person. Uh, and you know, and just her friendship with Howard Berger as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and you know, I was really, really lucky that, um, that she, her, and Gino Acevedo came down to, to Weta Workshop, um, and they'd worked with Howard before. Um, mm-hmm. and then, and then, you know, once rings finished up, you know, um, Howard was going to bring someone over, uh, to, to be a creature performer. Uh, for for General Lopman for Lion Witch and Wardrobe and yeah and Richard Taylor and um, and you know Tammy and Gino that were big advocates of me and yeah um, and and yeah man they 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 really did help me wow. um, um, you know basically do, you know do do what I love to do yeah I've got I've, I've got all the time in the world for for her and and so much admiration. Wow, man! Wow. Yeah, so she, she had so many good things to say about you too. It was so. It was, I, she would have been drunk. <laughs> oh man! I think it was. Oh. I think we were hitting her up on a. T- it was a Tuesday, and she hadn't gone out yet, Shane. So it, she was. There was no alcohol. Yeah. What'd you say? You just cut out. I'm sorry. Say it again. I, I just said, see, see, mine was genuine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, but she yeah. said we we said because um, at that time. This was last year, and we – I don't know if you remember me reaching out to you and, and, and seeing if we could organize something like last summer, and it just didn't, didn't work out. Yeah. But I said, we're yeah. going to talk to Shane next. Do you have a message for him? And she said, she said I, I miss his face. Yep. And we started laughing. We were like, oh, that's the you know, expression. I miss your face you know, kind of thing. She was like, no, yeah. seriously. She said, I miss working on his face. He has the perfect <laughs> face. He's the man with the perfect <laughs> face. And we were like, wow, what are, you t- what are you talking about? She said, you could do anything to it. She said it, he, his face is the perfect palette, and she went on and on about you. She she talked about wow. how how you were the glue of the stunt team, yep. um, how how you you made everyone energy, you yes know. you made yeah. everyone feel right. You would you would encourage everyone. You'd bring everyone up, and how how important you were uh, you are to her as well. So yeah, it was great. Um, well, yeah, I'll be brutally honest. It's not hard, you know, because when you're when you're actually feeling down, and I walk in the room, you look at me, and you go, "Man, at least I don't look that bad." <laughs> oh God! <laughs> ah, shit. Oh, shut up. Oh, That's man, terrible. <laughs> you, I mean, I feel I can't even tell. Like, I don't. He can't see us right now, right? Because our video is off. Yeah, we just have the but video. we are. I mean, we're Shane. We've been smiling oh, this whole time, brother. I mean, this has been a joy to talk to you. Um, we got to do it again because we. So we're also doing a Narnia book club. So I would love to 
talk because we talked a lot of rings and Hobbit. I would love to talk about your time in Narnia. Um, I would love to eventually talk about. I mean, we. I, I want to hear about Die Like a Shark too because you're producer, yeah, right? Yeah. You you acted in this and it's getting a lot of acclaim from what I've heard. I would love to see it, the uh, the short film. Um, I, 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 well, yeah, well, you know, fingers fingers crossed. We um, un- unfortunately we um, we've we've submitted it into uh, Khan, so Khan has wow. to be exclusive, and we won't know whether or not we've been accepted in until. Um, April, end of April, huh. and so so you know if it gets into Khan, uh, that'll be the first screening, and and if if Khan doesn't accept it, then then we'll be allowed to start submitting it out to to other festivals, you know. So yeah. so we oh, want to try crap. and get it out there, but yeah, Khan has to be the exclusive, and then once it's done the festival circuit, you know, we'll stick it out on Vimeo and stuff like that. But yeah. no nah, man, and and we were very lucky with that. Yeah, I was I was, I was a producer on it, and um. Very, very lucky in that we had a talented cast with uh, Jed Brophy, Mark Hadler, and, and yeah. Laura Thompson. You know, they're just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. Jed Brophy, who um, also played like a million characters in Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and then Mark Hadlow, who was also one of the dwarves, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. He was uh, he, he was one of the dwarves. Um, and, yeah, and, and Jed, Mark, and I, we've, we've, we've known each other for, for many, many years. I mean, we all went through drama school. Jed was the year before me. Wow. Wow. Uh, so so he, he finished and I came into my first year, and that's that's basically how, how I got to meet him. Um, and then Mark Hadlow, I just knew, again, he you know, he was an ex-drama school um, member and, and so student. And so we, yeah, we, we, but that was the first time we'd ever really worked together. And I'll tell you what, Mark Hadlow and, and Jed's characters, just phenomenal. And, you know, you, you talk about me as a Harad leader and, and how in that small amount of time you hated me. <laughs> Jed, Jed's character's a little bit like that, you know, yeah, wow. and, and um, Mark Hadlow's character, it was, um, you know, he, he, um, He's pretty much like the 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 coach from from Rocky, you know. He was just wow. like that that father figure, and it, it, just stunning performances. And Laura yeah. Thompson, man, she she just she's just absolutely phenomenal for someone that doesn't really talk or have or speak in the film. Mm-hmm. Her performance is nothing nothing short than Oscar winning. You know, it's wow. absolutely stellar. Yeah. Wow. Huh. I mean, I'd, I'd love to, and I'd love to talk about Narnia, you know, because you know I was, I was I'm I was in all three all three films, yeah. and, and you know, and, and and to me that's that's pretty much of a milestone, simply because I wasn't in all three films as the same character, you know, I played sure. you know I played different character yeah. characters as, as I came back, so yeah, man, I'd I'd love to talk about that at some stage too. Awesome. That's awesome. beautiful. All right. Well, we'll we'll talk to you again soon, Shane. And um, yeah. we'll be ke- keeping our ear out for uh, 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 "Die Like a Shark." We'll uh, cool. we'll be throwing up some prayers that it uh, gets accepted because yeah. Yeah. Um, if it's something that you've had a hand in, it's 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 got to be gold. It's, it's got to be, be beautiful, yep. brother. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, geez, the, the pressure's on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you've hey, and, and I, I, I want to thank you on behalf of all of our uppers. That's uh, you know the people who are in our community, yep. our, our book club friends. Um, they are going to be uh, blown away by this. Um, hearing hearing your your life story and part of your path, and then also just your experiences from working in uh, the world that that we love that you had a hand in bringing to life, bringing off the pages from a book and out of our imaginations into reality that, um, you know, if it wasn't for those movies, I don't know if I ever would have found Lord of the Rings. Um, and it's it's a story that, uh, I don't know, it's amazing how your experience on the film mimicked the story. And, and we feel the same way about our book club. We've, we've gotten to know a lot of people. We feel like we're on a journey with uh, people from all over the world and um, people who we never would have met before are, are now really, really great friends and... Um, it's yeah, just it's a yeah. beautiful thing. So it, it, they're all interweaved and they all connect. And uh, so we want to thank you for giving your time to to share uh, the role that you've played in it. It's it's beautiful. Look, it's awesome. Honestly, man, it's it, it's just a you know just you know if there's anyone to thank, bro, it's it's yourselves for reaching out to because honestly, I'm like I said, man, I'm I'm just a married boy from the east coast, just <laughs> doing what I love to do, and. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, uh, Peter Jackson, you know, he, he was the one that had the foresight to try and bring the, the, mm. the books screen sure. and, um, and, and New Line Cinema for sure. backing him, yep. not just for doing one movie, you know, to right. turning it in or three. Yep. And, um, yeah, it, it was just, you know, with, without without any of that, you know, who who knows what, yeah. what would have happened, you know. I, I you know, I, I have no idea. No yeah. one does. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. but the road, uh, the, the door that had opened up and, and the road that uh, the journey that's, taking everyone on it's just been absolutely phenomenal and you know i'd just like to thank um and you know all, all the fans out there and, and and people like yourselves that yeah. that, have, that have kept it alive bro yeah it's just amazing you know 20 years on and and sure. what well, 19 years on and 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 it's still strong yeah it is it is it, yeah. and and that's you know that's just you know everyone says that that we've we've brought it all to life but it's you know it's one thing about bringing it to life, but it's another thing about having um, diehard fans and, and people that, that just love the work that we've done and that we brought. But not only that, that actually keep it alive and pass it on to other generations yeah, that yeah. are coming up, you know? Right, yeah. It, you know, that's, that's, that's where, you know, everyone's, everyone's had a hand in it and everyone's got a big part to play and, I'm I'm just extremely lucky that I get to travel around the world and and meet different people and yeah, yeah. you know and, and just you know just get to share my stories like like honestly uh, the, for for me if there's if there's one thing for me that that it's it's actually helped me come out of my shell yeah. um mm-hmm. it's helped me to to talk to people yeah and it's it's and I love I love sharing my story simply because you know what? It's if uh, you know, I'm I'm I was brought up by my grandparents on a farm. I went to a school of twenty two students, yeah, ranging from age of five to you know. It wasn't until I went to college that I went to a big school, you know, and and just I just like sharing my story because you know if there's anyone that's that's out there that that doesn't think as though they've you know that. They, they've got nothing that that's going for them. It's just like, well, just look at my story. Yeah. I had nothing going for me, either, you know. Yeah. Um, but I just and, and enjoy waking up every day. You know, the the day I wake up is it's going to be a great day. The day it's going to be shit is the day I don't wake up to see it. You know, mm-hmm. and it's up to you to 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 follow what that day comes and and brings and and learn from from what you've gotten from that day and and take it forward. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, you know, and, and that's why I like telling my story because it is. It's just one of those ones, you know. I'm just someone that loves doing what I love to do, and and that's all that really matters in life, you know. Yeah, yeah, man. Wow, Gosh, that's some good advice, man. That's, that's just, just that's, that's great. Yeah, that's just uh, I don't know. Just well, let that it, let that hang there. That's well, just yeah. beautiful. And, and one thing I look, my biggest takeaway when I was listening to you earlier was just work. You just wanted to work. You wanted to yeah. work hard, and you just kept working. So, well, you know, my grandparents. My grandparents taught me that. that yeah. You know, my parents taught me that that nothing in life's given to you. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want something, you've 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 got to work for it. And yeah. and not only that, it, it means that when you work for it, when you get it, it's yours. Yeah. You've earned it, so it feels that much more yeah, important. You appreciate you, it. Yeah. You appreciate it. You know, and yeah, you you don't take things for granted. They, you know, and and they also taught taught me, you know, the you know, no one's ever better than you, you know, but at the same time, you're never better than anyone else. So I'll talk, I'll talk to a homeless person exactly the same way as I'll talk to the yeah. prime minister of New Zealand, you know? Yeah. Wow. It's just that everyone's, everyone's the same, man. Everyone's, we, we've just got all, we, we've just gone down different paths to get us to where we are, but we've, we've and we've all got different stories. Right. But we're, we're all the same, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. beautiful, Shane. Oh man, uh, we can. I, well, how do awesome. we? How do we move on? Well, I think we just another Gosh. big thank you, man. Because no, you just you just you just click the stop button. <laughs> just click the stop button. Okay, <laughs> and for... then you just go, Shane, Shane. <laughs> oh, oh, look, I'm really sorry, listeners, but he must have. <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's uh, much love, Shane. Uh, we'll talk to you soon, brother. Um, thank you, thank you so much, man. Oh, you're yeah. very welcome. Thank you guys very much for um, sourcing me out and. Um, giving me the time 
yeah. of course. It was awesome. an honor, and uh, we can't wait to do it again soon. All right? Yeah, for sure. Love to. Okay. All right, man. Awesome. We'll let awesome, you guys. Wow. Okay. There you have it. Well, that's our interview with uh, Shane Rungy. Um, just an awesome experience. So glad to have him on the podcast. We can't thank him enough. He's just a all around, you know, good guy and uh, a lot of good insights, a lot of good, you know, just life experiences and, and uh, advice there at the end. So uh, hopefully we'll get him and him and uh, Tammy on at the same time at some point. So uh, we're looking to track her down here soon. Um, we obviously, as you guys know, just a quick update. We've got you know uh, Sarah and Lane. Um, as of right now, when when Ez is uh, you know recording this little outro at at four o'clock in the morning, um, I'm not really sure what's going on with them, so I can't say anything yet. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll have some news soon, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, so I'll keep you guys posted there. The Lane's actually got a little special meme ready to go to send to me uh for for any you know um upcoming announcements there but so bear with us as we you know kind of adjust the recording schedule and uh get things all squared away i think next week uh we will be at the uh let's see oh yeah actually right after this uh lenny and i you know at two o'clock in the morning like we do we recorded uh journey uh to the crossroads and it was an experience so be ready for that look forward to that episode and uh yeah so all right, friends. Well, we want to give a quick shout out to our Valar. Um, just before we go here, a uh, quick shout out to Alex, Ben, Cecily, Charlotte, Chase, David, Erica, Jason, Jeffrey, Jennifer, Jessica, Nicholas, Panat, Phil, Sherston, Susie, WM Wolf. We will see you in a Hobbit Fortnite. And remember, Frodo lives. <laughs>